she admitted things that I would rather die than tell even my friends, let alone put it in a song. It was embarrassing. It's there embarrassing were things that fuck. were like humiliating on this. Yeah. And you know what? I commend her because that's what real I, art exactly. is. And that's what real mm -hmm. artists do. They pull themselves apart and you clap and cheer. And then she addresses the fact that we do that on Who's Afraid of Little Old Me? Like it, it's in different areas. And I also think it's an isolating album to the casual listener because it is extremely lore dependent. You hung me on your wall, dabbed oh. me with <gasps> your push pins. That oh made me ready to march. Whatever hole he's hiding in. We're getting him. It is hilarious to me that she is on Instagram being like, guys, don't worry. Like, we don't, I don't need you to avenge me. Everything's all good. And then she's going in her most angry voice. Jail, jail, you jail, deserve jail, jail, prison. jail. Welcome back to the evolution of a snake. I'm Zach. And I'm Madeline. And this is Tortured Poetology Part 1. Yes, you heard us right. Part 1, because someone who is severely deranged decided that she was going to release at the last second a double album, catching us all by surprise and adding a mountain of labor onto the backs of your loyal snakes. It was pure evil. It was the act of an <laughs> evil dictator. It really was. I found out she at the really nth hour. She was really exercising her force. I really found out at the nth hour. I didn't know for, gosh, almost 24 hours. <laughs> I didn't know that that happened. Did it was like 16, 15 hours before I found out about it. I was completely so you locked up. to the whole thing. You listened, listened to the whole to the thing, whole filmed thing. your reaction, I was and then was like, editing. I w well, not even editing. I'd finished editing. I was uploading my video, and I finally was like, I can check social media. And boy, Wrong. did I. Wrong. <laughs> <laughs> wrong 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 well we won't be able to analyze all of that today because we frankly have enough gaggery to get through oh, with yes. the standard version of the album yes. so there will be a second part of tortured poetology we also want to say thank you for selling out evolution of snake live in london for a second time we are ready to see you we're ready to see you and also if you're not on the patreon we've got a lot of new people join us and they're finding refuge because this album is so referential and lore heavy, it's really annoying to hear from people who don't know anything about what's going on. So if you want to be in a community of people who get who get it, who understand, and who also aren't insane and annoying, you need to come to our Discord, which you can only get by asking the Patreon. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I've luckily been shielded from a lot of the nonsense, but I just put Twitter back on my phone so I can scroll and tweet lyrics. That's all I'm doing. All I'm doing is tweeting there. <laughs> That's all I'm doing. That's all I wanted to do. Just letting I've people been know. waiting. And um, immediately, like literally 10 seconds after downloading the app, the nonsense started. The nonsense began. And I woke up and the torture started. That's exactly. That's how it always yep. goes. Yep. I thought we should maybe start by reading the prologue to Tortured Poets Department that Taylor could put together. So I'll just read it and then we'll discuss it. Okay. In summation, summary poem by Taylor Swift. At this hearing, I stand before my fellow members of the Tortured Poets Department with a summary of my findings, a debrief, a detailed rewinding for the purpose of warning, for the sake of reminding. As you might all unfortunately recall, I have been struck with a case of restricted humanity, which explains my plea here today of temporary insanity. <laughs> well, I'll say. You see, <laughs> the pendulum swings, oh, the chaos it brings, leads the caged beast to do the most curious things. Lovers, stylized in the lover font, spend years denying what's ill-fated, resentment rotting away, galaxy as we created, stars placed and glued meticulously by hand next to the ceiling fan, tried wishing on comets, on comets, tried dimming the shine, tried to orbit his planet, some stars never align. And in one conversation, I tore down the whole sky. Spring sprung forth with dazzling freedom hues, then a crash from the skylight bursting through. Something old, something hallowed, who told me he could be brand new. And so I was out of the oven and into the microwave, out of the slammer and into a tidal wave. How gallant to save the Empress from her gilded tower, swinging a sword he could barely lift, but loneliness struck at that fateful hour. Low-hanging fruit on his wine-stained lips, he never even scratched the surface of me. None of them did. In summation, it was not a love affair, I screamed while banging, while bringing my fists to my coffee-ringed desk. It was a mutual manic phase. It was self-harm. 
It was house and then cardiac arrest. A smirk creeps onto the poet's face because it's the worst men that I write best. And so I write, so I enter into evidence, my tarnished coat of arms, my muses acquired like bruises, my talismans and charms, the tick, tick, tick of love bombs, my veins of pitch black ink, all's fair in love and poetry. Sincerely, the chairman of the tortured poets department. Gag. I was pretty gagged, <laughs> especially because what I read first was the Stevie Nicks poem. And let me tell Boo. you, comparatively, this is, this is fucking Shakespeare. <laughs> this is mm -hmm. literally Shakespeare <laughs> compared to that fucking Stevie Nicks poem. I don't know how you guys all did it. I thought that the introductory poem by Stevie Nicks was the prologue. I was like, okay. That's how I opened my album. I didn't even album. have... That's crazy. I didn't even have the physical copy of the album. So I actually went into it with no prologue, no words. I didn't read any of her Instagram captions. I literally said hit play. <laughs> I said hit play and fought for my life. But if I had read that prologue, I would have I would have had a prologue. different experience. Yeah, prologue. Can we even call it a prologue? I would call it a declaration of war, really. That was... I I also find it interesting that it's an insummation. She's never done that before. I thought it was hmm. meant when when people were all freaking out that I didn't read it first. I was like, I thought it was meant to be read last. It says insummation, not beforehand. Where does I think it the come album's the completely different. Honestly, let me tell you, as somebody who did it, and you as well, if you don't read this first, it's a different experience. <laughs> it is. <laughs> it just is. <laughs> it's. It hits different. It yeah, really did. It completely hits different. And. I mean, also, I thought it was the funniest thing of it all was when Taylor on Instagram was like, by the way, guys, like, um, don't need to settle any scores. It's all good. I'm totally healed now. We're just going through um, the past. Meanwhile, it's Maddie Healy should be in jail. She said, and you should be in <laughs> prison. And it's no cap, not an exaggeration. P-R-I-S-O-N, prison. That's and crazy. And there's no song that takes that back. No. Did you hear a song that takes that back? I didn't no. hear that. No. I didn't hear a song that came that. to... I didn't get a holy ground, let's just say. There wasn't let's a moment where that. it was like, I'm so happy that it's over now and I think of you with fondness. Um, no, you should be in jail and you're the smallest man who ever lived. Exactly. She's not forgiving anytime <laughs> oh. fucking soon. No, she's never once no. forgiven and she's never forgotten. And I love no. that about her. Yeah, exactly. Should we do like a top level summation of the record? Like overall it's so hard to form a thought because we're so close to it but like overall how is it different or similar or better or worse than what you expected well the one of the first thoughts that i had after i finished the first part of the album um was that the main difference i could think of there are many differences between this album and midnight's like don't get it twisted there's a lot but the main one that i can think of is that this album is so much meteor it's a lot more verbose she says a lot of fucking shit on this album she was in here writing books she was churning out novels like beat poetry on this <laughs> shit that is the main thing that i mean i kind of predicted it when you name an album torture poets department obviously you have to be writing poetry but let me tell you i was really taken aback by the 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 thick layer of fat on this album her best writing ever, easily, as in just like the scope and the breadth of it, I really think that it is her best writing ever. Whether they are her best songs, who knows, that we haven't lived with them long enough. But certainly, I was so impressed by her turns of phrase and the different ways in which she approached songs and the starting points. Like specifically for me, I loved just an example of that is The Black Dog, how it starts with, I still have your location on my phone. You're in The Black Dog. Then it goes into this like beautiful reminiscence on that time that they shared mm. together. And I feel as though she tried so many different things. The fourth wall breaks are crazy. She just, it's in different areas. It's really in different areas. One of the moments, there's a lot, like you said, there's so many moments that we could reference. One of the moments where I was absolutely astounded by the level of writing, what was the self-write, is Who's Afraid of Little Old Me? The levels to that song absolutely made me want to put a revolver in my mouth and pull the trigger. I was ready <laughs> to get up and end it all. I really was. We can do I was a like, whole episode on that song. It's seriously. fucking crazy. And it's like, she's kind of alluded to a lot of these things before in the past, but never with so much 
I, I want to say accuracy and like mm. it was so on do you know what I'm saying like it was so it was on. pointed it was, yeah, pointed. It was very pointed I was gagging. she was in her bag she was I was really bag. gagging I was like and I've seen I haven't really been checking doing sentiment analysis because to be honest I don't care what the unwashed masses have to say about the record I haven't even read any of the reviews yet but I think people are not getting it. They're not understanding. Really? And that's because oh. they're stupid. Yeah. A lot of people are saying it's bad writing. It needed editing. Who's saying they're that? Sa- Who? Oh, people. people. Casual <laughs> listeners are not enjoying. People. The peasants you people. see. The people mm-hmm. outside of the castle walls. The unwashed masses. <laughs> the unwashed Them. masses. They that's crazy well the only thing that i Mm -hmm. saw was that fantano was asking like oh what's the worst lyric on torture poets and it's like i that was out of context so i didn't know if he also asked what are the best lyrics on tortured poets that's a fair question what's the best what's the worst i mean there's some lyrics on here i can't think of any off the top of my head but there (laughs) certainly are some there could be a couple that i'm like uh okay we could do without that but I, I also have not been looking because I don't need to know because I'm having this a is the ball. Thing. <laughs> I'm having a I'm ball. I'm not digging on this into bitch. it. Another thing that I noticed is that this really feels like a departure from the eras. As in, like, we've had the 10 Ooh. eras. To me, Midnight's is like the eras tour. You know, that's all one thing. This is like a completely new. It really feels yeah. like she's doing something different mm-hmm. here. It's a reset of, a, mm-hmm. of some sort. It's self-aware, but not self-conscious. And I really like that. Like she paints herself very unflatteringly at many times throughout this album. It's that good. reminds me of something I did see from the Unwashed Masses. <laughs> Somebody mm-hmm. said, um, <laughs> this is the most unlikable Taylor has ever been. And that really took me aback because I was like, is she being unlikable? I'm not getting unlikable. I'm getting well, honest. Well, we know her. We know I guess her. That's this true. is the problem. I get, this is the problem. If you... If you joined with Lover or Midnight's, you ha- simply haven't been getting the best of her. Oh, no. So no, this, this is, is a truth. return to form. And Folklore and Evermore are really diluted versions of what's going on on this record. That's not to say they're not good. But what was missing from Folklore and Evermore was the direct confessional autobiographical detail of which we get much here. Well, this is another thing that I was thinking about in comparison to Midnight's. I was thinking about how I think that Midnight's is either her pre-breakup or breakup album about Joe, depending on how you want to look at it. And that's why this album is not so much. Um, And I realized that it didn't seem like that even when we had Jover and we knew that it had happened because everything had a curtain over it. And there Mm -hmm. is no curtain on this bitch not a single moment of it she admitted things that i would rather die than tell even my friends let alone put in it a was song. embarrassing it's there embarrassing were things that spot. were like humiliating on this yeah and you know what i commend her because that's what real I, art exactly. is and that's what real mm-hmm. artists do they pull themselves apart and you clap and cheer and then she addresses the fact that we do that on who's afraid of little old me like it re- it's in different areas and i also think it's an isolating album to the casual listener because it is extremely lore dependent like some of these songs when you listen to them for example probably who's afraid of little old me and but daddy i love him if you have no idea anything about taylor swift's life those songs are like in a different that's simlish to you you're not you're just not going to get it no who's afraid of little old me is for the girls it's for the girls the gays and the days and if there's any people out there who don't fall into that category you are not going to get it and that's on period it's her most self-referential album which i think will make it polarizing and i think will make people not get it and deliberately misunderstand it and something else that is starting to irritate me that is boring is the incessant deciphering of who specifically what song what line what lyric is about we've talked about this a couple of times but like the composite sketch is a skill that taylor has really honed over the last couple of years and the timeline of joe and maddie who are the two central muses on this the timeline of of the breakup and those two breakups and also their intermingling is so blurred that i think many of these songs are not just about one or the other i think they are about like she's felt the same way in different situations right. and each of these things brought something out in each other they're very different muses but also they're extremely linked in a certain way and the way that she even approached maddie would not ha- this wouldn't have happened if it weren't for the breakup that she went through with joe so like 
there is actually a lot of people are like, you were wrong. You said that there was going to be cooks about the turkey. I'm like, there are. You're just not looking. <laughs> there are. She cooks exactly. in, in the worst way she knew how. You're boring. She said that he's jail. She said that he's the <laughs> hospital and she didn't get good sleep. <laughs> she He's was saying things and it's like the only person I, and again i would definitely argue that midnight's really covers a lot of the things that we just didn't know that and i think honestly so long london to me is like not quite cutting i guess we can get into it when we get into it we don't have to talk about this right now but what my my main point is that the turkey cook occurs it is just simply buried underneath the mountain of Halsey behavior. I don't know how else to put it because there's only <laughs> one person I know on planet Earth who can relate to this album more than Taylor Swift, and her name is Ashley Frangapani. Frangapani. That is and Halsey, here she is. and here she is. Thank you. I wonder if they they've been in communication. Oh, I know they have. have you been. noticed their friendship Please. kind of wound it down, wound down for a second. <laughs> And now it's back. Took a break. <laughs> and now it's back. She said, like, "Wait, you're putting out a record about how much you hate that fucking guy? Oh my god, me too. <laughs> I love it." Well, I guess let's just get into the record. We begin with Fortnite. Um, great gowns. Great gowns. Beautiful gowns. Great gowns. Beautiful gowns. Uh, Cricketta. I knew it Cricketa. too. That's what made me the most mad. Mm -hmm. I did not want to be wrong. When I saw the preview for the music video and we heard the um, sort of instrumental in the background, I was like, I was so wrong. It's going to be a gag. Post Malone, I, I never said anything bad about you. I never said you were a cunt. You're my friend. This, that, and the other thing. Then you said um, it all. And then I sat down and I listened to it and I said, why? Why? Why'd you do that to me? I was rooting for you. We were all rooting for you. We were all rooting for you. I don't really get why this is the first single nor the album opener. It is like a pure vibes song. I don't dislike it and it like it's fun to listen to, but I do kind of wonder like what is the point of this? I think she just wanted everyone to hear I love you it's ruining my life. I also think she was really gagging. You know there's always a line on a Taylor record where you could tell she's like I just slayed that this one, and it's <laughs> i want to kill her it's like mm -hmm. okay we she loves great. that she loves that <laughs> i would love that line if it was in something that made sense exactly i don't I, I find it befuddling and it's like maybe if i sat down and i really come through it and i put my thinking cap on i could sit there and analyze it and come up with something but i'm listening to my boy only breaks his favorite toys on repeat i'm listening down bad this is not on repeat right now Maybe it'll click one day, but not today. Not today. This is what she had to say about it when she introduced it to iHeartRadio. Fortnite is a song that exhibits the common themes that run throughout the album, one of which being fatalism, longing, pining away, lost dreams. I think that it's a very fatalistic album and that there are lots of very dramatic lines about life or death. These are very hyperbolic, dramatic things to say, but it's that kind of album. It's about a dramatic, artistic, tragic take on love and loss. I've always imagined this song took place in an American town where the American dream you thought would happen to you didn't you ended up not with the person you loved and you have to live that out every day wondering what would have been maybe seeing them out and about that's a pretty tragic concept really i don't see that reflected in the video at all she was doing her thing again you know she loves to make mush <laughs> that's her favorite <laughs> she's like i kind of want to give slayage and she did like the the her first look when she's like um, chained to the bed and then she takes her pill. Oh, she, she looks she Georgina. Looks, she looks incredible. Be, like absolutely what fucking incredible. But what's the point? There's a lot of really it's good an, shots. Like the phone booth shot. It's an shot. Easter egg right. bonanza again. Is it? And Is well, it? yeah, she said there's it. something in it that represents everything on the album. There's like the black dog that walks through the, the British oh. phone box. Thanks, girl. See, now, now Mama, Mama hasn't noticed these things. <laughs> I don't, don't know bother. anything about that. <laughs> don't, don't bother. bother. <laughs> so it's not Easter eggs of things to come. It's Easter eggs of things that are in the album. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's well, not even an Easter egg. That, it's just this is the it. album. It's <laughs> which was kind of giving, I'm not doing another video, which would be a mistake, Taylor Swift. It we need would be my a boy mistake. only breaks his favorite toys. We need my boy only breaks his favorite toys. Why would you not? Why don't I was we thinking do, about I this. can do it with a broken heart. Hello? Well, we need, we need the Barbie tees. Everybody likes Barbie. Mm. Put, why are we not doing this? This is not it. This is not it. It doesn't even, to me, it doesn't even encapsulate what the album is about in its entirety. It's not a mission statement. If you're going to go for a mission statement, like we really should have just done Torture Poets Department. Just do that. Make that the single. Mm. 
I agree. And I think it should have opened the album too. I mean, I, mm -hmm. I, I right now I struggle to think of like one song that really ties it all together and like is a perfect mission statement. But Fortnite is one of it's the worst it. ones, I think. It's not a contender. <laughs> it's not a contender. It's not a contender. Down bad, honestly, like if we had to pick another single when I do try and do that, the songs that stand out to me are My Boy Only Breaks His Favorite Toys, Down Bad. And you know what? Even Fresh Out the Slammer. Maybe so. Fresh Out the Slammer? I think I Can Do It With a Broken Heart would have been a really good uh, mm, well, single. I think. Of course. Maybe that's a good mission statement for the album in an insane way. Huh. It is. I Can Do It With a Broken Heart. Thanks, girl. I'm so depressed Period. I act like it's my birthday. That's that. fatalistic. That's yeah. miserable. Put it on. You said so. <laughs> Let's go. But no. <laughs> I think she was just going for shock value, functioning alcoholic, being sent away. I took the miracle moving on drug. The effects were temporary. It has a lot of pretty lines and lyrics, but in their summation, I'm like, what this is, it adds up to nothing. That's All these like, really nice good moments point. that come to nothing. Well, you know, and Post Malone is there and he doesn't, he doesn't do, <laughs> he doesn't take away, but he also doesn't really add. He's just kind of like a decoration in the song. I mean, I'm, I don't want to sound like- She loves to do that with her collaborators. We been well, knew that. I think it was time for a man to be a decoration in the song. <laughs> I really oh, absolutely. Do. Absolutely. And That's he's- That's the best part about the song is yeah. he's barely on it. And I mean, he's great. Like, I don't have any problem with him. I think that this was wasted potential. I think we could have done something a lot better if we're going to bring Post Malone in. Like, let's do the thing that Post Malone does. This isn't really something that Post Malone does. So I was just kind of like, don't, okay. Yeah, I don't really even get his involvement in it. But okay, sure, Jan, whatever. Mm, we clap. Um, it also, at the end, in the outro, there's a point where it really sounds like she's saying, me. <laughs> I haven't noticed that. Go and off. I heard that. And I said, no. I said, you better not. Me you better not. <laughs> of all the things it's, that I of all the things to reference, that did never even cross my mind. Maybe she should reference it. Go on. It's produced by Jack Antonoff. Okay, Period. Slay. Jack did some of his finest work on this record. It has to be said. He really did. He said it's his favorite one, but I think he says that every single time Taylor puts out an album. Well, it's his job to get up there and say that. It's uh -huh. literally his job to be like, it's uh -huh. the best thing ever. And it's like, shouldn't you He's feel that way? He's the rent a crowd. Well, exactly. Mm -hmm. Shouldn't you feel that way every single time you make something anyway? It's the best I've ever done. That's exactly how you should you feel. Should. You I should don't feel think proud. she said that about Midnight's. As she shouldn't. She was sitting on this. She was sitting on this. She knew the All truth. right. Tortured Poets Department, the titled track. Well, we should have just started the record here. This is the real thesis statement for the record. I wasn't expecting this eccentric production. It's like glittering and sparkling almost. And it really reminds me kind of of the 1989 vault tracks. I also mad props to Jack for the way that he processes her vocals. There's a lot of really interesting stacks and layering here. And he's a co-write. And I can kind of hear his voice throughout the lyrics on this mm -hmm. song too. The first thing I said after I heard it is that this is like the most Jack Antonoff song I've ever heard come out of the two of them. Like this just like reminds me so much of him. And I think it's kind of perfect just because of the mm -hmm. subject matter and like what they're, what we're talking about and what we're doing and how we're setting the album up. It's like really an excellent production for the album. And I think this song to me set the tone for the production on the album way better than Fortnite did. Like I understood oh, immediately. Yes. Oh, I see what we're doing here. I get it. Mm -hmm. Immediately. I got it. I don't know what I was expecting. I think because it was a long song, I was expecting a lot of live instruments, but I do love that we have a return to the long song because I think it gives her so much more space to like breathe and play around and get really in her bag. Mm -hmm. She's definitely trolling Maddie Healy and <laughs> she's making fun of his typewriter, but she's also kind of telling on herself for being a little bit of a pick me. She's like, I'm not going to tell you that it's stupid because I'm still stigmatized, but I'm <laughs> side eyeing you and I'm going to save that observation and roast you later when it's over. <laughs> um, but she really is drawn to the pretentious lofty man. This is this is a holdover from the John Mayer interlude. Exactly. There are times on this record <laughs> where I felt like she was saying some shit that she has only ever said such venomous things about John Mayer. And I was like, now... <laughs> This is crazy. They kind of are like, and there's like a lot of differences between them. Like, don't get me wrong, but like, same dude, different font. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I, 
I had the same thought about this. It, I mean, I think it's very iconic that Maddie is like the co-chair of the Tortured Poets Department, clearly. Because if you really think about it, Joe didn't have the range. He never had the range. Bland, no flavor. Nobody moved. Nobody cared. We learned that she was basically suffocated and bored by him throughout this entire record, which is part of why I think the Maddie Healy interlude comes across as like more intense than it should have been. There is a difference between like intimacy and love. You can confuse them. She certainly did. Um, but her prologue kind of like just lets her get into the nonsense without holding on to it, which I thought was super interesting. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I need to bring something up. <laughs> what mm -hmm. I need to bring Please up do. is we declared <laughs> Charlie Puth should be a bigger artist. <laughs> that gagged me to the moon and back. I was I like, laughed. Itch you could have said anybody. <laughs> and you, you said, said Charlie X. Char X. Charles Puth. Charles Puth. <laughs> Who makes TikTok videos about being pitch perfect. I'm speechless. I mean, do I think he has a, a wonderful voice? Absolutely, I do. Sure. sure but Jen. is he an artiste with a capital A? No. According to Taylor Swift, he is. He puts on his tidy <laughs> whities and he poses and I clap for that. Trust me, he I does, do clap. He's doing thirst traps for the gays. Like, and we're clapping. The, the artist time's it. over for him. The he should be a bigger artist. Over. That's there's something so pretentious about it too, which I think is the point, and that's why it's she demeaning. put it in. It's demeaning to Charlie Puth. To Charlie Puth, yeah. I mean, they're to both the Puthinator. Like, I think. Well, they were high. They were high, and they were talking about Charlie Puth should be big. <laughs> lol, like as a joke. I don't think they were being like, we need to get Charlie Puth's music out there to the masses. They're like, this oh, kid. See now, he's I good. Don't... I don't want to. Do you think she do you really think she would put out a song where she's trolling on Charlie Puth? I think she trolls <laughs> at multiple points throughout this record. No. <laughs> I thought she was dead. Maybe ass. so. Charlie Puth. She could be. She she's could putting be. him on the map. I mean, they're everybody's looking, who's Charlie Puth? <laughs> well, I, I I listen to We Don't Talk Anymore every now and again. Oh, I, actually I like that song. I mean, oh, but it's the Selena of it all. He's just there. I again, know, a decoration. If there was no Selena. It wouldn't even be anything. <laughs> that is fascinating. Um, who else decodes you is a really good line. I think that Taylor's like the queen, obviously, we know of unraveling clues, noticing patterns, observing quirks in someone's character. She does it to herself all the time. But I think it's very funny when she says, this ain't the Chelsea Hotel. We're modern idiots. Maddie takes himself so unbelievably seriously. He really reminds me of Charlie XCX in a certain sense. It's like, yes, you're talented, but like... Let's not have delusions of grandeur. Like a lot of these songs, <laughs> production wise, really do kind of sound like the 1975 songs as well. So I thought that this was a troll. It it definitely is. And that's again why it should have opened the damn album. Open mm -hmm. the album. You should have opened the we album. Need the damn <laughs> um, <laughs> the part where the trolling ends and the psychosis begins is to me the the bridge. <laughs> Uh, that's, that's when that's crazy. she's like it's that. not funny anymore he's gonna kill himself and so am i and also by the way um we've been thinking about getting married and i think it's gonna happen any day now <laughs> and it's just like <laughs> wait, wait 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 i thought we were trolling hold on <laughs> hold on and that. jack jack was there in the studio he heard taylor swift say i think if he ever broke up with me it would be the end of all things and i think we're gonna get married and he said Go, girl. Look, That's a good that idea. Down. He said, drop that, that down. Put that down in the notebook. <laughs> we'll, we'll return to that in a couple of weeks. Yeah. He's like, I, I got a point to make, so I'm just going to you know, encourage you to see this through so that we can get maximum value out of it all. I chose this cyclone with you. We have a lot of fate at play on this record. The idea that they were like destined to crash and burn, but she knew and was powerless to it. It's not like she ignores the signs either. She like refers to him as a paradox multiple times before they get mm. actually together. But it seems that she believes she was tricked into ignoring them or believing that the blatantly obvious that he would leave her and that he was love bombing her wouldn't happen. And I'm, I have nothing to say to that. This song <laughs> is Taylor. Listen. Speaking from a sort of delusional girl persona, it is, and the but like like the total awareness of the fact that she was delusional is really delicious too. She really was like, huh? Even it's even in so much when she says like, who the fuck was that guy? It's like you <laughs> he's literally wearing a costume, and you were like, this is great. This is this is you're on this is working. Snack cam. 
dressed smack like a cam. Jehovah's Witness and you said, I need that smack in my bed cam. now. Smack Wrong. cam. Wrong. Smack and also cam. it makes me wonder like, Maddie Healy, what were you saying? What were you doing? I love how the idea of marrying the man who love bombed her for two weeks was the closest she came to her heart exploding, not the seven year relationship uh, with the last I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't I, That's the thing. She's never really said anything of that ilk about Joe. And even, even such comments well, paper as. rings, I suppose. I I'll marry yeah, you. But what I mean is like comments like, does it feel like everything is just like second best after that meteor strike? Things of that Forget. ilk, she really doesn't say stuff like that about Joe. If you really go back through the catalog, I think mm -hmm. that, and this is something that I find so interesting, is that I think that in terms of her art, at least, I don't know about internally or what's really going on, but like she gets more creative creativity out of these intense trysts and like love affairs that crash and burn. M my read on Joe is that it was a slow burn fizzle out. And she fell out of love mm -hmm. with him. But she was still in love with Maddie, I guess, when they completely fell apart. And that absolutely messed with her. And she just she just managed to milk. I mean, putting out a 31 song album. She wasn't doing that for Joe. <laughs> I mm -mm. mean, let's call it what it is. That's so true. He literally is catching strays for being boring, being too boring to write about like throughout this record. And you're right, there's such a difference between knowing something's over and then just delaying the end of it for a long time versus really being shell-shocked by someone ending it with you. And that's a sensation that Taylor has not had for years. Because she's if you think about it, the last, she ended everything before she got with Joe. She ended it with Calvin. She ended it mm -hmm. with Tom. Right. She hasn't really had her heart broken since Mr. Styles. She said, you know, I'm loving this daylight thing. Was she? <laughs> she said, was she? if we don't scream and fight and kiss in the rain, I'm going to lose my I'm gonna fucking kill mind. <laughs> I'm going to lose it. <laughs> well, this is where, I mean, I'm jumping ahead a bit, but like, I can't wait to do our part two because the prophecy is so interesting when it comes to her perspective on love. And I feel like this whole album is like an, an illusion. It's like a ruse to her. She thought she was in love, but really she wasn't. It was just the the closeness that intimacy offers you, which is so different to actually being loved. And I think before this situation, she thought that like love was something that you had to work hard for and suffer for. And then when it came so easily, she was like, oh, this is how it should be. And then she realized it wasn't love at all. Hence the prophecy. Like, can you please just change my fate? Like, I'm sick of this being my destiny. So good. She literally goes back and forth about that, too. She's like, love is meant to be intense and insane. And then she's like, no, 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 it's supposed to be daylight. No, 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 wait a second. It's supposed to be intense and insane. No, 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 wait, wait. It's not supposed to be like that. It's like, honestly, when it actually does happen, you won't even know it. <laughs> you, you, mm -hmm. It's like, that's just the truth. So there I you go. I think she knows that, too. And also, it's her life's mission and purpose to be in love. It is. So the longer it takes for her to get there, and I have a feeling there is no final destination for her with love, I think... She's going to be, this is a cycle, a pattern, a prophecy, if you will, but I'll get into that at a later date. Up next, a diva, a true diva, my boy, only breaks that. his favorite toys. As you said, Madeline, Jack Antoff, I want to kiss you on the mouth. With tongue. <laughs> With tongue. <laughs> That's an important part. We will French mm -hmm. kiss. This this part <laughs> of the you. album, you know, we'll we can get into this whenever, but like I actually thought that this track list and the way that it's ordered, this specific part of the album to go oh, torture poets department, torture poets department, into my boy only breaks his favorite toys, into down bad. It's really like torture poets department. This is psychotic, but I'm in love and I'm having fun. Into my boy only breaks his favorite toys, which is uh oh, <laughs> and then down bad, which Forget. is ambulance, ambulance now. Mm -hmm. It's literally the story. I was almost right. Chronological. Chronological. Mm -hmm. I want that known. It's very one of her best track lists ever, for sure. It, I mean, it makes sense, which is, you know, many, many other track lists can't say the same thing. <laughs> this is where she really starts going ham with her word choices again. Mm -mm, she said mm -mm. the tears on her face were rivulets. Oh, well, okay. On her I also plastic thought it was so smile. funny watching your reaction that you cried. You were... <laughs> to my boy so only hard. breaks his favorite toys okay i had an epiphany <gasps> i literally was like it's happening the wordsmith the shakespeare 
the the part that when broke me the box um, i know when he took me out the box he took me out of like, my box <laughs> stole my tortured heart left all these broken parts and told me i'm better off but i'm not i was like that's it <laughs> it's over it's over it's over for you it's over it's over um delicious song this is one of the ones that Mm -hmm. is on repeat let me tell you oh yeah it gets better every time too it's real good this this is what she had to say about it it's a metaphor from the perspective of a child's toy being their favorite until they break you and you don't want to play and don't want to play with you anymore that's how we are in relationships we're by a person so valued in the beginning and then they break us or devalue us in their minds and we cling on to the no 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 you should see them the first time that they saw me they'll come back we'll get back to that it's a song about denial so you can live in this world where there's hope for a toxic broken relationship to me this is where I think a composite sketch bleeding timeline kind of makes sense because I think the dissolution of her relationship with Joe and her fling with Maddie happened concurrently. And I think that some of these songs really can go both ways or one can contend with emotions from each scenario. I think there isn't a super clear delineation between fact fiction and hypothetical on this record. Fortnite is a good example of that. But when she's working at times with metaphors like these, which can be a little convoluted and extended, it becomes kind of like silly trying to guess who it's about. This is a specific the- one that I honestly think could be about either one of them. And it doesn't even matter because mm-hmm. I'm clapping. <laughs> I am cheering it doesn't and matter. clapping. It really doesn't it's- matter. I think. I almost Go wonder on. if it could be about her just general experiences with men and not even about anybody mm-hmm. specific. It's very general for that exact purpose. And it's like, this applies to so many of these fuckos. So mm-hmm. there you go. Men. That's what it's about. I found two kind of readings of this. I found there's the long-suffering girlfriend. You should have seen him when he first got me. Kind of implies that she's been with this person for a while. But you can also read this as a fling, being picked up and put down very quickly. He saw forever, so he smashed it up. Kind of gives Joe to me because he was a true commitment phobe. He really made no promises to her, and that's what she kept trying to extract from him. Whereas Maddie was like the opposite. Once I fix me, he's going to miss me also seemed like a very turkey line to me Mm. because she was so broken after that was over. This really could reek of either. And also, he took me out of my box and stole my tortured heart. Was certainly – she was tortured after she left Joe. But before she met Joe, was she tortured then? It it really depends on how you look at it. Like, it could go either way. But it is interesting how she describes her dating and love process as playing pretend all the time. A very intriguing and exciting thread, but it goes back to the idea of fatalism, the prophecy, this thing laid out before you that you have no power with. Is this the end of all the endings? Unlikely. It's something that I really love about the album is this idea of like, it was meant to be, and yet... It's, like, really, really fascinating to me. It gets, like, really crazy on um, the anthology, but the way that she fucks around with it and how it's different in every single song and how she talks about it, Fresh Out the Slammer also deals oddly with fatalism. Like, for a song that's really about, like, I I need to get dick down right now. (laughs) It's so strange Mm -hmm. that she's, like, digging into this deep, like, prophetical, star-crossed lover shit. It's doomed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and i was gobbling it up i love mental it mental hospital yep <laughs> mental hospital up next down bad um hello 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 this it's shit nice to meet you down bad is fucking incredible what i love the most uh, the production on the song is absolutely perfect literally oh, she brought it to jack and amazing. jack said oh we're talking about aliens i've got something Bleep for loop. you boop, 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 boop. I was like, yes, it's perfect. I love it. I love it. I love it. Yeah, it really the soundscaping that Jack did on this, brava. Um, this is what she had to say about it when she premiered it. I was comparing the idea of being love bombed when someone rocks your world and dazzles you and then kind of abandons you as an alien abduction where you were abducted by aliens, but you wanted to stay with them. And then when they drop you off, you're like, no, I liked it there. It was weird, (laughs) but it was cool. Come back. The character in the song felt like I've just been exposed to a whole different galaxy. How can you just put me back where I was before? It's ingenious. Oh, girl. She was cooking in that meth lab. She was in that lab. She was making the blue stuff. Crystal meth. Bags on bags. Mm Mm-hmm. And it's good as hell. Miss some of my favorite lines in this song. Did you really beat me up? I don't think she's ever... From the start. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Line one. Did you really beat me up? (laughs) 
in a cloud of sparkling dust just to do experiments on. And what I love about that line is like, did you just want to see what it was like to date Taylor Swift? Is that what this was? Many such cases. And it That's why, again, like, this could be about so many different people. A knife right here, baby. That hurts. I don't like mm-hmm. that. And I'm going to find you, whoever you are. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is a composite sketch, too, although it does kind of lean towards Maddie a little bit more, maybe. Um, but I think the – I don't think she's ever had her world rocked quite in this manner. And I think the sudden intensity really threw her off. Like knowing her past relationship patterns, she's usually the one that is like more keen, more into it. But she ends up being the pursuer here a little bit more, or she is getting blocked or stonewalled while trying to deepen a connection that seems strong, but is actually weak. And she's likening this intensity to like literal, the foreignness of the experience for her, it being something that takes place in outer space. And the fact that it was like, so alien to her and hard to believe for others really isolated her from her friends and like other people around her not feeling able like she's even to describe how it felt without sounding crazy i might just die it would make no difference she's having (laughs) these outbursts at the gym these girlish adolescent like meltdowns this is the definition of being down bad well they'll say i'm nuts if i talk about the existence of you and she was right (laughs) she was right (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> she was fucking right another time where this comes up i mean not to flip flop and go around all over the place but it's hard when there's connections Let's and i can do it all around. yeah and i can do it with a broken heart when she says i find your things in a drawer and it confirms that that even really happened it's crazy this idea of like what the fuck was that even real like who was that Being what abducted. was that being abducted and it's like a thorough line and so is fate and so is doom and so is abduction throughout the whole album she was in the lab do you understand this isn't just something Mm -hmm. they made it's in different (laughs) areas you can't get this at the ariana grande store you can't even get it at the fucking you can't get it anywhere the store is closed there's no store out of stock every single store closed taylor is like you know, when Walmart comes into town and she takes mm. over the small Whoop. businesses, Goodbye. they're all gone. Store brand gone. <laughs> Store brand We've gone. Only got the import. But I the, love the bridge. The bridge is so goddamn good. I'll build you a fort on some planet where they can all understand it. I, girl, girl, my favorite part closer. is I loved your hostile takeovers, encounters closer and closer, mm. all your indecent exposures. How dare you say that it's dot, dot, dot. And she can't even bring herself to say, how dare you say that it was over because she cannot for the life of her imagine it being over. And then she just says, fuck it. I was in love. I know it's fucking crazy to say that, but it's how I feel. And it's how you made me feel like I lost my twin. What? That's the most crazy thing. I don't understand it. <laughs> <laughs> it's the most insane thing I've ever heard in my life. When, what way? I need to know. Uh, oh, I think I cracked the code on that. I think, I think I did. Crack it open. Like I lost my twin. That's so dark, first of all. But I think there's definitely a kinship between Taylor and Maddie as songwriters. And it's really different to the connection that she had with John Mayer mm. because he was more of an instrumentalist than a songwriter. Maddie has his own like parallel world building and lore universe that people are deeply invested in, like a very like in tandem thing to Taylor. And he also writes very confessionally about his lovers. So I think she really met her match in this sense she met like an intellectual like match and felt very like only you can understand my compulsion to like write these songs in the way that I do he's also very like pop songwriter that kind of feels a little bit insecure about making not real music like that I think they have a lot of things that make them very Mm. twinish that's very interesting I do agree that creatively that's the closest she's come to dating somebody who's like on her creative level. I her think plane. that's very true on her plane of existence. Even that's the closest she's come and man, it really fucked her up. I'll say that. <laughs> <laughs> but it also, I think it also made her go, I'm going to beat you to it. and I'm going to write better music than you. <laughs> that's the impulse behind this record. I really and, feel it. Uh, I would like to see Maddie try to write this. I would really, I would pay to see him try. Yeah. Oh, he couldn't. He couldn't. He couldn't. And she's even also doing that insane thing she does where half of these songs do kind of sound like 1975 songs. 
um, which is hilarious. <laughs> she can't help herself. She can't help she herself. Can't. It's like a composure. It doesn't even help. Jack Antonoff has produced 1975 songs, has he not? Or he's worked with them. Mm -hmm. He has. Yes. Well, there, then she's like, Jack, them. you gotta come on down. <laughs> just put the... a little, put a little, put so a, I just... heard into this. <laughs> 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 oh, it's delicious. Let's, I love it. Let's get into the track five, So Long London. The production on this definitely gives sad breakup, moving out movie montage. I love the choir at the beginning. Oh, but I was I love definitely that. surprised by the sonic vibe of it all. And I don't know that this is the track five. What say you? I agree. I definitely think Smallest Man or LOML. LOML is like a real dirge. That's crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> it's like a real like heartbreak song. Smallest Man Whoever mm -hmm. Lived, I think, gives all too well. I think it gives Dear John. Dear John. It has a big crescendoing fin and it's you know amazing, incredible. Um, so Long London kind of almost has that, but there's the same thing that was in You're Losing Me, which is this which is this like exhaustion and it's like i'm so tired and it's not it doesn't have the the intensity or the venom that smallest man who ever lived had and i i do think it's kind of like not the best choice for track five but i think it also kind of doesn't really fit in with their other track fives like even in the the universe the tscu taylor swift cinematic universe like i find it maybe it's just because it's new but it feels like the odd man out I love it for the yeah. record. I'm a So Long London. I'm I'm truthing. I'm I'm spreading the gospel, et cetera, et cetera. But as a track five, I don't know. Well, I feel like the track five, a little bit of the track five element is a gaggery. It's you learn something you didn't know. And we kind of do know everything that she's talking about on here. Like there isn't a surprise. How much sad did you think I had in me? Can you give me your take on that? Because I've been like mulling over that lyric and being like, what is that? It reminds me of you're losing me. You know how, mm. what does she say in your, I mean, you're the, you're losing me number one stan. What does she say in that <laughs> song? It's like, um, how long could we be a sad song? Like how long could we possibly mm -hmm. be sad for before I just said I've had enough? Do you think it's about Joe thinking that like relationships should be like a suffering thing? Like if they, they should be work mm. like this and it should feel bad? Uh, no, I think it's more like, I, I think it's more, how long did you think that I could just be miserable and then it, 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 that we could just like keep going on this way. How much, how sad do you think before I, could I get before leave. I say I've had fucking enough? I'm not mm, going to be sad anymore. Okay. That's kind yeah. of how I was reading into it. Um, but that's interesting. The way that you're thinking of it. Maybe it, he did. I mean, the only reason that I wouldn't is just because of how she wrote daylight and like shit like that about him. So it's like, yeah. but it wasn't daylight get, in the end, was it? I feel like he thinks that being sad or being um, depressed or struggling is something to admire or it's like a badge of honor to be worn. And I really get that in the rest of it, like the part where she, where they're both kind of blaming each other in the bridge. And I think it shows that they're like his knuckles, my, my, her knuckles went white holding on to his resentment, him being non-communicative and sulky. My friend said it isn't right to be scared every day of a love affair. You know, fear is something that I hadn't really gathered from their relationship before. Anxiety, maybe, but fear. I was like, every breath feels like the rarest air when you're not sure that he wants to be there. Let her go! Unshackle her! She had a chain in the tower. She's always talking about her tower and her jail cell <laughs> and her hospital bed. It's like, come on. <laughs> she hates this man. She hates, she really was not vibing with this fucking dude at the end there. Um, you swore and the that you loved verse, me. That's crazy. Oh, yeah, the yeah, whole the whole the me. whole fucking thing. The turn of phrase she was so long London. I thought it was really clever. So long London, mm -hmm. and then Gave you all of that youth for free for so long, London. And then Ooh, I mad. loved this place for so long. Mm. And, that you know, you I think your it's... first reaction. It, it's still getting me. I have to tell you the truth. And the way that she kind of uses London, almost like Joe's name. Have, mm -hmm. you, have you thought, like, so long, yeah, you'll yeah, find yeah. someone. I'll find someone, mm -hmm. you'll find someone. Well, because he's the London boy. Because he's the London boy. He literally is the London boy. That is kind of sad. It is kind of sad. 
when she the says the second um, verse i didn't opt in to be your odd man out i found at the club she's heard great things about so she's saying i invented you bitch if all I knew, I left all I knew. You left at that. You left me at the house by the heath. It's giving he cheated with his co-star. I'm sorry, it is giving that. It is kind of giving that. It's definitely giving like. I mean, who is she to be talking about? I think definitely emotional affair. I that's what I get, and it's like, well, she's over there talking about guilty of sin. She did it too. It, it's not she cheating. She did it too. If it happens in they, my head, it's like again, <laughs> girls, you hate each other. Break up. You hate each other. Enough. Why are you still doing this to yourself? I died on the altar waiting for you. She's like subtly dropping hints that she wants to bring. <laughs> <laughs> She's like dropping hints that she wants to get married. I mean, when somebody gets on track and begs multiple times, even just on a single record called Lover, I want to get married. It's and the man doesn't produce a ring. That Refuses. must have been fucking humiliating. And it's like to be. I think she, she doesn't even want to get married. I think she just wants, she wants certainty that there is a love that can last forever. And the earthly medium for that for her is, is marriage. So she's like, who's going to be the guy that offers me that? And no one has. And, and, and I ain't seen none yet. <laughs> I ain't seen none yet. Not this yet. guy. Not the guy who sacrificed them to his, to the gods of his bluest days. Not that. That was really like the jail sentence for me. You but will see jail. I'll see to it. You see the, the I'm prison bars. I'm just getting color back in my face. Oh, girl. Jail. Oh. Prison. Girl. You're going to prison. Two but graves, one nice gun. to him at the end. She She's is. like, you'll find That's, someone. You'll find someone. Like, I don't, I think that she really had, like, especially towards the end and, you know, calling him jail, saying that he's a hospital, <laughs> this, that, and the other thing. I think she really <laughs> felt resentment towards him when she was writing this album. At the time when this shit was being written, she really felt resentful of all the time that she gave him only to discover that it didn't really work out. But I think in this song, there are some moments, and on the album, on the whole album, there are some moments where she recognizes the fact that, hey, I was fantasizing about Maddie Healy. <laughs> like, look, mm. the fact of the matter is it wasn't all just one thing. You'll find someone, I'll find someone. It, it was it was. I think a she good was just more run. mad about the wasted time. Yeah, the wasted time really, I think that would drive me insane. Especially if I was Taylor oh. Swift and I was hot. If I looked like her and I wasted my time with fucking Joe Alwyn. And you had that much money and, and I that much access to I do fun things. I could be sleeping with Michael B. Jordan. I could be sleeping with <laughs> fucking Dylan O'Brien. Oh. That would piss me off so bad. I could be at Love on Tour. I could, I could be at Love on Tour. I could be front row hairstyles and you take me backstage. I could be doing that. <laughs> and yet. And yet. And yet you're with a turkey. Mm -hmm. You're on the farm. Yeah. Up next, but daddy, I love him. Mm. Now this is this the song. this is really the uh, the this the novel the craziest thing she's ever the made. novel <laughs> of the record. The even just like the block of text in the lyric booklet is like oh my god, <laughs> she's writing. What was that? Charles Dickens. Literally Charles James. Dickens. The James. Iliad. The Odyssey. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. This to me is a modern day love story. Like it, it is. That's what I was gonna say. That. It literally sounds like it should be on Speak Now. That's what it mm -hmm. sounds like to me. It's so uh, it's classically giving. Taylor. It's like, you won't like this song if you're not a Swifty. I'm saying it. You if you're not a real not Swifty, you. you're a detractor. You are a detractor. You, you just won't get it. It's very melodramatic. Insane fourth wall breaking. And there's no way that anyone who doesn't know the lore can enjoy this song. Like, it's incomprehensible garbage if you don't understand what she's talking about. Like, I also I'm think... Pregnant? No, I'm not. You should see your face. What? She's crazy. <laughs> She's, She's crazy. crazy. I also She's think that crazy. Aaron has been like producing too many vault tracks and he's starting to produce like Nathan Chapman. I was like listening to the song and I was like, hold on. Thank you. Thank you, <laughs> Thank sir. You. Keep, it, keep it coming. Keep yeah, it coming. It's the image of her running with her dress unbuttoned oh really does. I have this in my notes as well. Really gives speak now. The chorus is also literally her in a getaway car careening towards the chaos. It's so delicious. I'll tell you something about my good name. It's mine alone oh, to uh, disgrace. Don't even, tell them. Don't, tell them. Don't. Don't even. Put it on the. Don't, put it. Don't even bring that up. <laughs> don't even bring that up. <laughs> Dutiful daughter, all my plans were laid. Tendrils tucked into a woven braid. I love the alliteration on that. Growing up precocious means sometimes not growing up at all. Now there's a lot of precocious being used to describe that's her what, youth here. That's what I said. A lot I said of that. she just learned it. That's her. She like looked that up the other day it's and was like, up. hold on. 
<laughs> but I think also it's because, you know, when you're a precocious young person, you have like a false sense of confidence. How can a person know everything at 18, but nothing at 22? And life has just been a series of humblings for Taylor because she really was so certain about like right and wrong and love and how things should be and princes and princesses. She thought she knew it all. Her worldview, in her opinion, was really set in stone, but slowly she has like been beaten into the gray area. And this is her literally, you know, I'm telling him to floor it through the fences. I'm not coming to my senses. I know he's nope. crazy, but he's the one I want. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, we needed this. We've been needing this. It's been a long time since that I told heard me something like I this. To know. It's, yeah, it's, <laughs> and, you know, for all my questions of why did she do that, this song, I was like, I get it. Thanks. There's a couple Closed. of lines that, like, even completely out of context, are, like, some of the best things she's ever written. I don't cater to all these vipers dressed in empaths closing. So, say that. Speak. Louder. S words. God Speak save on it, queen. the most judgmental creeps who say they want what's best for me. Sanctimoniously performing soliloquies <gasps> I'll never see. Gag them. That got me. Inform them. Tell she them. don't care about your ass. This is the kind of first major rebuke of the all-important, all-powerful fan. Because Taylor used to really capitulate to the fans. You know, everything was in service of them. They were always right. She would, like, strive to impress them. And now it's like, you know what, bitches? I have to live my fucking life. And he's you crazy, just do but you. I want him. And you don't care. You're pretending that you care. But you're fucking, you're virtue signaling for points on Twitter.com. And I'm over it. It can't change the beat of my heart. That's what she said. I'll tell you something about my good name. It's tell mine them. alone to disgrace. That yeah, was yeah, my yeah, main yeah, thing yeah, with the Maddie thing when it was happening. I was like, how are you allowing a man's actions completely outside of her relationship desecrate her name? Who are you to think that you have the ability to let her name be spoiled by some guy? Mm -hmm. Crazy. It's really lame. We're Especially right because – Everybody knew. It's like if you didn't know this, you were a fool. Everybody knew that was going down streaks. <laughs> and it was happening sooner rather than later. So it's like, why do we care? No one thought that was going to last forever. No! And if you really knew Taylor, you would know that this is actually exactly something that she would do. This is oh, very much so in line with the way her. she has conducted herself in the past. One part that really got me, thinking it can change the beat of my heart when he touches me and undo the destiny the desk there she goes again she's Death. she's literally in her bag to me this is such like she's obsessed with like kind of fictionalizing real things in her life and then giving them a happy mm -hmm. ending she loves to do that yeah she's like let loves me it. write romanticizing it. <laughs> this is her taylor swift <laughs> fan fiction her rps <laughs> she's like writing her she's own like, fic if i if i met maddie in um 2010 how would i respond <laughs> like this because i like this i don't know any better yep because exactly. i really don't know any better <laughs> i mean you this is the best encapsulation of her as a romantic as well you ain't gotta pray for me we do though i'm 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 doing Gregorian chant for you, but uh, every you know, damn day, I'll, I'll let you, I'll let you mm. think that you haven't been possessed. Me and my wild boy and all of this <laughs> wild joy. That the makes way me she clocks crazy. Joe. If all you want is gray for me, and she's speaking to the fucking speak up now, bitches. If all you want is gray for me, if you want me to be bored, if you want me to suffer, if you want me to just carry on this relationship because you have a delusional parasocial investment in it, then it's just white noise. And this is my choice. Girl. Tell them. I don't have <laughs> brava brava um okay the part about her parents i was like girl does scott swift love maddie healy she's deranged for introducing a new boyfriend to her parents after a week that is completely insane behavior well according it's, to but her daddy, it, was I love them behavior. it was destiny and they loved it. It, it was the truth but it they was... didn't at first they didn't at first well clearly. i would i mean they came around he's just kind of like even just like you look at him and you're like, no, he's the honey. kind of guy that dads don't like. Dads just see someone like Maddie yeah. Healy and they're like, mm, no, absolutely. He's John not. Mayer in cheap he's... clothing. Like they're exactly, they're the same. exactly. <laughs> they're literally the same. Yeah. No, you can't come to the wedding. I love the last. I'm having his baby. No, I'm not. Production moment where it kind of like stops and mm. comes back in. Aaron. Aaron, I will kiss you on the mouth with tongue. It's coming. Madeline thinks it should be 30 <laughs> seconds longer, and we should be sending her to the gallows for that. 30 seconds shorter. It, and, and Sorry, 30 seconds I have shorter. 30 seconds shorter. I do think that there's a point where I'm like, okay, 
I mean, like up until about four minutes, I'm like, yeah, da 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 da. And then I start to think this is a little bit too long. But it's That's not. Nice. I think you should go to jail. <laughs> it's not like a real. You too. I love the song, but it's it's just like. It's sometimes I find myself skipping it just because I don't have the time to sit there and listen to it. It's an invest. You have to really, yeah, you, you have, have to, to really, it's like Dear John. Yeah. You have to yeah. sit there and be like, I am listening to this. Whereas Down Bad, I'm down bad crying in the gym. <laughs> I can do that on the way to the bathroom. I can do exactly. that in the kitchen. I can do exactly. that on the way to the gym. I'm good. I'm good. Okay, fresh out the slammer. We're in the saloon. And I love to be there. <laughs> and I absolutely <laughs> love to oh. be there. There's something so sexy about this song. It makes me feel like a feral animal. It makes me mm-hmm. feel like I. it's I, like pheromones. <laughs> I crazy. picture her in this dusty old bar with a lasso, boots on, but of course, nursing something brown at the bar. And she's just being a little sex kitten. It's a Jack Antonoff production, and he boots to that. Oh, he boots the part the really like galaxy brained production moment is when it switches and the drum beat comes in. That gagged me the first time I heard it. I was like, oh, it's in different areas. It literally goes from <laughs> one area and that guitar, to another. That oh, it's dirty so guitar lick. Oh, yes, girly. Roar. <laughs> and I just love Fresh at the Slammer. The oh. Slammer. <gasps> this song is talk. about <laughs> emerging from the misery of being with a turkey. Again, she likens it to being in jail and she wants to call someone to get her right back into jail. She knows the perfect ex-con to call. It's so interesting. Now, the first time that I listened to this album, I wasn't really thinking about Maddie. When she said, this is the song when I was like, when she said, I'm the girl of his American dreams. I was like, well, yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. Oh no! I don't know why that didn't you, give you me didn't clock that on Fortnite because it was on Fortnite as well. There was an American line on Fortnite, but I think I, Fortnite I just, you know, was washes just like, over. It's nonsense because it's nonsense. I, I guess I thought that because like Fortnite is um, British English. I was like, oh, it's like mm-hmm. Fortnite is a British word, and America. We don't. You, that's what I was. Anyway, it's an American bullshit. It's I'm an American. So it's just like <laughs> bullshit. It's that completely changed the meaning There's, of the song um, to me. This is this is actually more of a, a Joe Cook than anything to do with Maddie. Silent dinners, bitter. Yep. He was with her in dreams. Yep. Again, more proof that you know Taylor and Joe had mentally checked out, and they were both guilty as sin. But the real Cook is that blue keeps coming up again for Joe. Gray and blue and fights and tunnels. In tunnels, handcuffed to the spell I was under for just one hour of sunshine, years of labor, locks, and ceilings in the shade of how he was feeling. It's blue, but it's going to be all right. I did my time. Oh, diva the, down. The crazy, the crazy line in this song is, watch me daily disappearing for just one glimpse of his smile. And then, Psycho. but it's like, I feel like when she goes to... You know, whoever this is, <laughs> whoever this is, it's like she doesn't have to try so hard. And I think like that was really appealing to her. And that's why Fresh Out the Slammer. It's like how we were talking about they have an intrinsic link creatively. And it's like with him, it's just so natural. And in this relationship mm-hmm. that's dying and failing, it feels like I'm ch- what does she say? She's uh, chiseling Handcuffed. away at the safe. She's like at oh, the yeah. safe and she's trying to like drill it open. She doesn't have to mm-hmm. do that with him. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I'm sure that was real sexy to her. Oh, it's just so delicious. F- I love the song. The fights and tunnels and handcuffed to the spell I was under um, really gave me, I think it depicts visually that isolation that Joe really imposed on her. Like if you think about what her life would have looked like when they were trying to hide, it would have been private plane, umbrella up, don't take a picture of me, into my car with blacked out windows, more umbrellas, into my apartment, close the curtains, stay there all day, don't go out for dinner, don't want to be seen. Um, it really gave like there was physically no sunlight available to her mentally and physically as well. And how she describes the good as being so infrequent and how it never outweighed the past an hour of sunshine right back to the wasted youth and so long London. All right. Well, uh, that makes me want to put a revolver in my mouth again. <laughs> it's just like it really the the layers to all of these songs. And like, I really enjoy sort of like, 
the comparisons that she makes between the two because really it's like when she talks about um the gi joe that you buy at the mall the mm-hmm. the 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 sickly gi joe it's like that could be either one of them but for radically different reasons and it's like you mm-hmm. know why matt i mean maddie does kind of look like a sickly little gi joe and then joe looks like a gi joe but he's sickly in another way it's like the mm-hmm. comp- it's crazy to me the layers the, it's like an onion you keep on peeling and you keep finding more stuff it's delicious it's delicious it's completely delicious as I said in my letters, now that I know better, I will never lose my baby. Okay, so how long was this correspondence going on for? Hmm? Apparently, at the 1975 show in January, she stayed up talking to Maddie until 4 a.m. that night. That's according to Dubois. I Dubois, bet so she that with a grain did. of salt. Well, that's, but I can that's... definitely see these two modern idiots sending each other insane typewriter letters. I can see that. No problem. <laughs> And you know they were like so clandestine about it too. They were leak like one. Oh, a- just oh, leak one, oh. written in invisible ink. Well, I mean, Maddie, do everybody a service because I know that you have them. You some people keep their old scarf, some people keep their old <laughs> typewriter love letters, but you're keeping something. Well, and I know what it is. Maddie is apparently, and this shocked me, relieved at what has been revealed on Tortured Poets. He's thankful oh. and relieved. He thought it could be worse. I was like, girl, how? What have you done? <laughs> what have you Did listened you... to? Did you hear he the smallest man who ever lived? It could be worse. So he knows what he did, and I want him to admit it. Tell mm-hmm. us, under perjury of law, inform us now. <laughs> what have you done? <laughs> <laughs> and also, you know, the, again, all, all, all over Fresh Out the Slammer, prophecy, fate, karma, I did my time. It's going to be all right. I did my time. Yeah, now she... something good is supposed to happen to me. Well. And okay. she talks about at the park where we used to sit on children's swings wearing imaginary rings. S- Stop talking about that. that. Stop. Stop imagining. <laughs> Enough. That is crazy. <laughs> She's insane. That, that really was. Blah, 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 blah. The repeated She's references. obsessed with forever. I'm going to get married to him. someone making a promise to her. She We're going to have babies. It's like, who? These are Why? fake characters. Also, These are fake characters. These are not real people. Can you imagine having a Maddie Healy baby? No, thank you. She can. And she was clapping and cheering. I don't want that in my She was clapping <laughs> she was like, and cheering. Please. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's go on to the first, for me, flop on the record. I mean, it's not a true, true flop. But it's Florida. To me, this is the kind of Jack production that I really don't like. My friends all smell like weed or little babies. That's interesting. I think this kind of shows the uncomfortable position you can be in as a woman of a certain age when you're getting older and your friends around you are kind of like settling into their ways and doubling down or like making stereotypical progress, like taking those traditional steps towards like the next phase of your life. And I feel like Taylor kind of often just the uniqueness of her situation makes her feel a bit kind of like, the city reeks of driving myself crazy. And exactly. You know, I would love to make some comments. <laughs> I would love to Please make do. some comments. So th- I won't say that I dislike this song, but I will say that I find it ridiculous. <laughs> I think they were in that <laughs> studio just laughing and giggling High and just having fun, supply. which is great. I mean, fine, like you guys had fun, but I just find it like ham-fisted and like a joke at the same time. Fuck me up, Florida. The metaphor isn't good. I don't like it. It's done. It's like she when she was like explaining on iHeart when she was like, I watch on Dateline all the time. People go to Florida to escape their crimes and this, that, and the other thing. It's like, okay, that's great. But Florida but you didn't for, talk about th- those that. are those are white men <laughs> who rob convenience stores. Not <laughs> fabulously wealthy women who are going to bury the bodies of their ex-husband. She's obsessed with that, by the way. She thinks that's I don't think like she's the, ever been to Florida. The Black Widow She's of never it all. been there as a visitor. She, she's never been to Florida. If she's been to anywhere in Florida, she's been to a different part of Florida, and that's not where people Palm are Beach, burying the bodies. that's it. She's and not going it. to the Keys. She's not with Lana Del Rey in the Keys. Let's just say that. No, she's, she's not, not. there Florida at kilos. the Shell Shack, no. No. Uh, eating $2 oysters, and, I don't know, pounding back like a 40 ounce. <laughs> you're, you're not with her there. I do I do really like when she yells, it's one hell of a drug. I'm like, okay, sure, go off. Yeah, sure. I just wish this wasn't about Florida. That's it. It should have been Louisiana. And we should have done a different production. (sighs) I just think- The metaphor that she's trying to give is like escape, freedom, lawlessness. 
but Florida is like kind of a like you said, it's a bit wah, wah. It's very commercial. Like when you think of Florida, well, it's I don't also think for it's old people. exciting place to escape. It's like sad middle class driver aspiration. It's like parking lots and like strip mm-hmm. malls and people with like Trump signs. Like it doesn't sound lots of lots of like shallow swimming pools. It doesn't really sound like a gorgeous, exciting place to hide out. Let's do the swamp. Let's Louisiana, do the swamp. baby. Louisiana, as you said. New Orleans. Carolina. Oh, that's the oh, place. Oh, Carolina knows <laughs> whatever the fuck she was saying. <laughs> <laughs> I do like that line that's like, little did you know your hometown's, oh, your home's only a town you're just a guest in. And what also about being arrested in. I don't, here's the thing, what? here's the, it's the truth about me. not knowing your place in the world, being neither here nor there, or something, there's something there, but it's not clear. So like, this is too much up to interpretation for me. So, and then I don't get this part, I'm gonna be honest, I'm a dumbass, I don't get it. So I did my best to later rest all of the bodies that have ever been on my body. And in my mind, they sink into the swamp. Is that a bad thing to say in a song? So I guess what she's saying is, all the, all the people that I've slept with, I want to kill them and put them in the swamp. Is that a bad thing to say in a song? I guess so, but it, it's a fic- it's fan it's fiction. Not anyway. nice. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so it's not nice. Yeah, it's not nice. But who are you talking about? I th- I th- I Love like the left me like this, and I don't want to exist. So take me to Florida. Okay, sure. That's a, I, I just I, there's a lot of good lines in the song. I just wish they were in a different song. Like, is that a bad thing to say in a song? Is like a wonderful uh wonderful fourth wall break, but it's disappointing because it's in it doesn't Florida. Hit. <laughs> bum, 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 bum. It's like, okay. So we agree. Flop. Yeah. Not that interesting. I Up skip next, it. Why don't we talk about something I thought was going to be a flop, but absolutely is not a flop. Right. Guilty as sin, question mark. I should never question a song with a question mark in it ever again. Never. And I always do. I love this vibe. Her vocals are so good. And there's a lot to mine. A lot to mine in this song. Downtown Lights is a song Maddie loves, so we know this is about him. Also, this song kind of sounds like that song a little bit. I went and listened to it, and I was like, oh, okay. It has that perks of being a wallflower, like, coming-of-age thing going on, this wistful longing. My boredom's bone deep. This cage was once just fine. I, that gives me a Midnight Rain parallel. My boy was a montage. <laughs> My town was a wasteland. <laughs> Um, back to Downtown Lights. Did you know that that song came out in 1989? Shut up. It did. Shut up. That's <laughs> just, so annoying. I can't not bring it up because I looked it up say as, it. as well. I, I, look, I was curious, so I looked it up, and there it was, 1989. I was like, fucking dumb bitch. It can't ever <laughs> just be the – it always has Mm-mm. to be something. Um, but The but way yes. she leads into this song is gorgeous as well. It's like just the way really, it just starts. Yeah. It's just um, a recollection. And then I love how the line that you brought up, this boredom's bone deep, this cage was once just fine. Am I allowed to cry? I like how oh, that's am where I am I allowed cry? to cry? And, and it's like, I, I'm wondering if like this cage that she's in, is she even allowed to say that she's sad in, in, the, in the cage? You know what I mean? To him or to Maddie? Like, is it okay if I cry? Because back home how in my much cage. How sad did you think I had exactly. in me? How exactly. much? Tell him. Ask. I, I, it's just a question. Literally. It's just a question. Literally. <laughs> I dream of cracking locks and throwing my life to the wolves or the ocean rocks. Girl, she wants to die. She's so bored of being with you. She describes Maddie as a paradox here, and I really get it. To her, he's like this lifeline and potentially a new love of her life, but it's a getaway car, and he's also a rat. Like, he is a known scoundrel, <laughs> philanderer. He's also an addict. Not to say that's, like, to make someone a bad person, but that is something to consider when you're, like, dating someone. It's something to think about, especially if they're in, like, active addiction, which we do kind of get clues mm-hmm. at later on. He has all these traits that are not indicative of him being able to offer her real, lasting love. And she says, am I bad or mad? Or why? Or why? I love soon. it. <laughs> Much to think about. Um, I keep recalling then it's things. Then of delusion. <laughs> oh yeah, I keep recalling things we never did. Messy top lip kiss. How I long for our tryst. That makes me feel like a fucking escape mental patient. How I mm-hmm. long for our tryst. Oh, it makes me crazy. <laughs> <laughs> it makes me really crazy. These fatal um, fantasies giving way to labored breath. We've already done it in my head. She's crazy. Which is interesting because a lot of people, I think, are trying to insinuate that they had gotten together before this interlude. I don't think they had. And this makes it very clear to me that they hadn't 
consummated whatever thing they had going on. I think they might have had a flirtation ship. Consummated. But it wasn't consummated. <laughs> <laughs> um, but this idea of like mentally cheating and detaching, I mean, you are kind of guilty if you if you dreamt it and acted on it later. Are you kind of guilty then? It's an interesting... Yeah, I mean, it's kind of like... It's one thing to like fantasize about like somebody who's not in your life, A... Like, let's start there. Are you talking to them? Then you can't really fantasize about them because then it's Mm-mm. just going to be, it's, it's not a absolutely fantasy. Absolutely going to become a thing. And I think if Joe ever had any idea that that was going on, he probably like had a very bad reaction to it as anybody would. But it's it, this, I, I kind of enjoy the, I think this is maybe something that people are calling unlikable and they're wrong. Oh, I find this like deeply weird. human I love this song. and deeply yeah. raw and deeply honest. This is something that I love about her is she admits it. She says, I did something wrong. And and she like goes through the motions of like analyzing it and thinking, why am I thinking this way? Is this wrong? Is this right? And then just like mm-hmm. giving into the feeling either way because she's a human being and this is what human beings do. And also I think because talking about that paradox line again, they both had wildly different expectations going into this situation ship. For him, he was like, hot, hot boy summer with a hot pop star that I had a cool connection with all those years ago that I've been, like, writing weird letters to. Uh, well, yes. Taylor, I'm locked in a cage, and this is the first person who has bailed me out, so they're going to get this intense attention, this, like, love that I've pent up, and I'm going to give it to you because I've been so bored and so unhappy and so frustrated for so long. What if I rolled a stone away? They're going to crucify me anyway. She knew it wasn't going to go <laughs> down knew. well. She knew yep. that people would be speaking up now. And she said, goodbye. Yeah. She she said, you can speak up now all you want. I'm rolling the stone. I'm going to see what kind of spiders <laughs> underneath there. What lizard, I'm salamander. Yeah. <laughs> and you have no choice. Something that was really annoying, not annoying, but I was kind of like, is this an Easter egg? She describes these longings as locked in lowercase inside a vault. Folklore song titles. What do you wait a second? Hold on. What are you saying? Wait a second. Locked in lowercase <laughs> inside a vault. What do you mean? What do you, her what longings do you mean? Were locked, okay, her longings were locked in lowercase. I swirled okay. you into my poems. Yeah. All of the evermore folklore songs are in lowercase. And they're all kind of like poetic poetry. And the vault we know is a place where she holds her songs. <laughs> We're doing the thing. We're doing the crazy Rosetta Stone thing. It could be wrong. Um, it could be I wrong. I think that, that actually, I mean, it's so specific and it could be true because, I mean, there's it definitely. It doesn't make sense as an image otherwise. Locked in lowercase inside you in- a vault. But I did. It did occur to me. It swirled you into my poems, and I don't think mm-hmm. that's just referencing question. I don't think that's the only thing it's referencing. No, and it's on you, this song. My fucking with the lowercase in the vault. The one is about Maddie Healy. I mean, I don't like to hear that. After I don't really she broke like up with that. Joe, listen. Here's the truth. After she broke up with Joe, what song did she open the folklore set with? Shut your mouth. Shut your <laughs> I'm horn just mouth. saying. You know I'm just what? Saying though it. I will say. I went through the one lyrics and the one lyrics really is about missing something that actually happened. It's not about like longing for something that never took place. It is about longing for something that you had, like your friends. Like I met your friends. We did all this stuff. I, I, and we know from this song that they never really got started in that way at, at least. So I'm still holding up my delusions. We can both be deluded, (laughs) but in different ways. We can both have our delusions. I don't like it for the record. I would rather Harry Styles is the one that got away. <laughs> we never go out of style. If long suffering propriety propriety is what they want from me, they don't know how you've haunted me so stunningly. We didn't know. Literally nobody had a that. fucking clue. All I know is I ten years ago you wore a nineteen seventy five tank top. That's it. That's, <laughs> That's on it. period. I that was like, it can't be. Period. How can it be more serious than that? Yeah. How wrong I was. How wrong we well, all were. They don't Up know. Next, the greatest song that was ever created. Who's afraid of little old me? She came onto this shit like the Blair mad. Witch. She I said, tell. I'm taking you into the forest. You're in the tent. You're scared for your life. You're finding my voodoo dolls all over the place, and you're so scared. And I don't care. I'm going to keep coming. I'm going to torture this- you. Yeah. <laughs> Poetry. Shakespeare. Shakespeare Reborn. Mm-hmm. The vocals? Let's the vocals. start there. She's snarling. The 
She's snarling. She's snarling. The who's who of who's that? Clop them. Your ex friend's <laughs> sister. <laughs> Mr. went in the club and he kissed her. <laughs> the wannabe Z listers. Yep. Coming at her again. Coming at, Coming her, at her again. again. If it's you so- wanted me dead. You should, you have, should just have just said. said. Nothing Ooh. makes me feel more alive. Swiftly it's neutral. so <laughs> mysterious. Oh, my God. The production? I forgot. I looked. I think it was Jack. I looked because I was. I really thought Jack. it was Aaron. It's Jack. Okay. Um, and I was disappointed <laughs> because I was like, I thought it was I an know Aaron number Aaron, two when I heard it. But it sounds d- like him. Jack is such a mysterious figure behind the boards. Sometimes he's going boop 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 boop, boop and then sometimes he's, he's doing versatile. This. He's crazy. He's and um, he's a verse. this is like really giving me kind of like look what you made me do meets Mad Woman. Like if those two songs came yeah. together and formed one unit, and mm-hmm. that's right up my alley. So to say that I was that's... clapping like a seal at feeding time, <laughs> that would be accurate. <laughs> <laughs> One more tuna, please. <laughs> so I leap from the gallows and I levitate down your street. When's the book? Where's the book? Where's the novel? When is it coming? Where's the I book deal? I would love a novelization of Taylor's imaginary, like inner, like the way that she sees herself or the, the world sees her mm-hmm. as like this evil witch. We need the book. We need the comic book. Sell it. I buy it. Who's afraid of little old me? You should be the menacing. I, I, was, I was attacked in that moment. I was I was the uh, scandal also okay here's a line that can that that had me thinking the scandal was contained the bullet has just grazed at all costs you keep your good name you don't get to tell me you feel bad that kind of gave to me how carefully managed the breakup with Joe was like obviously there were memes but in terms of other boyfriends he's gotten off pretty easy Keep your good name, like Joe's good name. Interesting. Yeah, because and then cause like he hasn't said anything. Also, you can't say that about Maddie because the scandal was not contained. No, it was going crazy. It was all over every. I mean, she lived. I'll tell you that. Just that's only because of the air. She store. lived. She but lived. No one survived. But... No one survived. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, that's interesting. I hadn't thought about that. At all costs, keep your good name. You don't get to tell me you feel bad. Okay. Interesting. Mm, I got you on that. Delicious. Is it a wonder I broke? Let's hear one more joke. Then we could all just laugh until I cry. I was ready to go to war. I, that was really a swifty moment. I was I mounting laughing. my steed. I was getting I my sword laughing. out. Hand heart. I was putting my hand helmet on. And my, my hand heart was raised. And I said, <laughs> we are swifty. I'm Madeline and I of marched. Troy. <laughs> and I and fucking I... marched. <laughs> I was like, I'll you. find you. All you people. Amy Poehler, Tina Fey, uh-huh. Tracy Morgan, like all these people women who I know who have made jokes about other her. women have a special I place will in find hell. you. Anyone heard that? <laughs> Anyone heard that before? <laughs> I thought the lyric that really, really gagged me was um, I was tame, I was gentle till the circus life made me mean. The difference between the old Taylor and the new Taylor. She was tame, she was gentle. Don't worry, folks. We took out all her teeth. We knocked that precocious bitch down a peg. Now what's she going to do? Oh, my God. That really Gag. gagged me. Uh, 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 Gag. S- so tell me everything is not about me, but what if it is? <laughs> it is, though. That's <laughs> not a joke. Then say they did Part of this is serious. Me. But what part if they did? Is serious. This is real. No, this is not it's just <laughs> This is biblical. <laughs> Shit. This is this is the book. She's not, it's not satire. That's what this no. song is. That's what people are missing about the song. It's not entirely satire. She's no, she's dead ass. Pissed. And I can and I you wanna, would only know that. I want to snarl Swifty. and show you how just how disturbed this has made me. Say you that you wouldn't last an hour in the asylum where they raised me. I'm seeing a big meditation on fame and the nature of celebrity. Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah, we can sit here and debate. We do it all the time. The merits and demerits of being famous and what she should or shouldn't do. But at the end of the day, her level of fame is a profoundly isolating experience. And by all accounts, she's handled it better than anyone else has. It is an asylum. You have to go insane to experience it. And this image of her being this like retired circus act with no teeth, rotting away in an old damp room in the asylum, getting drunk on her own tears. <laughs> Brava. <laughs> I'm silent. I'm completely and totally <laughs> fucking silent. And not not flattering. This is not a flattering portrayal of her. She's well, angry. This is 
the another great Jack productional moment when she says that I'll sue you and it goes all quiet. If you step on my lawn, that I'm fearsome and I'm wretched and I'm wrong. Put narcotics into all of my songs. Now that that's when and I love That's it. why you're still I'm singing along. Ooh. Oh, <laughs> 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 I just literally had to whoop. I had to do a peep for a second. It really inspired me. Yeah, I, I this this is like you could write a book on this one song alone. This shit is in different fucking area. You could spend a very long time dissecting this. And well, luckily, mm -hmm. we as the snakes have all the time in the world. Let's check back, <laughs> boys. You never know. Put narcotics in all my songs. Oh my god. You lured me. You hurt me. Mm -hmm. You taught me. You mm -hmm. caged me. Mm -hmm. Then you and called, then me, you called crazy. me crazy. Tell them. I am what I am because you trained me. Oh, diva. This diva, is diva, the diva, whole, diva, diva, diva. She's tapping into something so core about fame. This is what you all wanted. I did the thing that you asked me to do. And Look then I did what it. what you made me Exactly. Mm-hmm. I was exactly what you wanted me to be, and then you wow. turned on me because I was exactly what you wanted me to be. So now what? Now I guess now I'll what? just be a... Now I'm the Blair Witch. There you go. Literally. <laughs> now I'm the Blair fucking witch. <laughs> and this is the kind of... Like, I love to hear the fourth wall breaks that we've gotten basically ever since folklore are really good. This, is, this is tied to Mirrorball. This is tied to Look What You Made Me Do. This is tied to... Is there anything on Midnight that addresses that? Fame Dear Reader, I guess. It does. This it is does. like the hard edge of Dear Reader. The sh the, sh the knife. Mm -mm. <laughs> the knife. This is the oh tip God. of the pen. It's delicious. Well, Brava and Bellissima. It, it, so career we highlight. Absolutely. 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 I can fix him. No, really, I can. This is like Fresh Out the Slammer's sequel cousin or sister. In Fresh Out the Slammer, we have her getting out of jail, making the call and going to the bar. Now she's at the bar and she's realizing, yep. oh, oh um, everybody hates this guy. A, that that Oops. paradox. <laughs> I can't imagine that away. He's yeah. here now. I yeah. have him and I'm responsible for him. Like I right. have to say to people why I like him. And I'm struggling and, to um, get to the reason. <laughs> <laughs> what did she say? She says, um, the jokes that he told across the bar were revolting and far too loud. And then she's like, well, that's my man. <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't know what to do about that. <sighs> we just have to deal with him. I can fix they it. No, don't worry, guys. They shake their heads <laughs> and say, God help her when I tell them that he's my man, but your good Lord doesn't need to lift a finger. I can fix him and only I can. Now, this is a <laughs> complex of hers. Let oh, yeah. me take a damaged man and rehabilitate him. Let me reshape him in my image. This is a very unhealthy and disastrous way to enter into a relationship with someone. If they need fixing, in your opinion, they are not right together. I could see it from a mile away. A perfect case for my certain skill set. He had a halo of the highest grade. He just hadn't met me yet. Walk with me. Maddie is someone with the raw materials that Taylor could really help harvest, polish up, and return him shining and brand new. They interact with their work very similarly. They have their deep parasocial relationships with their fans. She's got the keys. And they're also both tortured artists who make pop music and occasionally feel a little bit embarrassed about the fact that they're not doing something more serious. I think she thought that she could remove a couple layers of grime from him and turn him into a more respectable artist and man and help him win and have a joint slay together. Wrong. I also think that she, I mean, she knows a thing or two about PR. So she was like, he's a PR nightmare, but I... If anyone and, can. Yeah, if I anyone can. can. Me and me and Tree Payne. We're going to cook this guy. Literally cook the and books. And could they? No. <laughs> Nobody I think can. they actually made it Whoa. worse for him. <laughs> maybe I can't. Yeah. That was so funny. At the end. <laughs> well, maybe I can. This song is very essential for the story. It is. I think that she really put too much of a spotlight on him. She didn't think about that part. When when mm -mm. everybody, people who didn't know who he was were looking into him and finding all this insane shit about him, they were like, oh. When you meet that out of context and you yeah. don't know any of his songs, you're like, yeah. why the fuck would she waste her time with this person? Right. I mean, I know the context of the songs. I like the 1975 and I'm still like, why the fuck would you waste your time with this person? So. <laughs> there you go. I get it. Yeah. Well, let's get into down bad <laughs> down bad loml i was gagged by this one of her saddest songs ever and it's so interesting to me how 
I don't even know how it began. I I did the I did like a whole lyrical analysis for the listed review on this song earlier today. So you'd oh, think gross. I'd have more to say, but um. Well, I can start if you want. A reunion <laughs> yeah. breakup is often sadder than a fresh breakup because you go into it being like, okay, now I'm going to give it a real shot. We have the time. We have the energy. We're in a better place. Timing is not an issue anymore. They're embroidering the memories of the time she was away, trying to make them seem more beautiful and literally like together create a meaning for it. We were just kids, babe. I said, I don't mind. It takes time, like explaining away the reasons why it may not have worked in the first place. I thought I was better safe than starry eyed. I thought stability was more important to me than intrigue. Turns out for Taylor, it wasn't. I felt a glow like this never before and never since. I think that really speaks to the sudden intimacy and the trickery of intimacy and how it masquerades as love. Well, does it feel like everything's just like second best after that meteor strike? It would have been fun <laughs> if you would have been. The I one. don't like to go there, <laughs> but unfortunately, that's where we are. Well, you showed me colors. You know, I can't see with anyone else. <laughs> Stop it! <I> Stop. <laughs> well, it's just like that this behavior. I... You're sick. Oh, You're listen, sick. Listen, I'm just calling it like I see it. I'm just calling it like I see it. I and wish I, I could unrecall how you called it like you see it. <laughs> <laughs> if you know it in one glimpse it's legendary you and i go from one kiss to getting married she's so fucking crazy she kissed she's him once insane. and she said this is forever i know it is i know this is real and this is what it's supposed to be and it didn't help that he was also telling her that that yeah this well was, this is this is this the part is we're the starting thing. to learn this is, this is the where thing we're starting about to get why she was being crazy because up until now it's just i'm crazy but here it's like, well, was I? I was being led astray. I was being misrepresented. He misrepresented. He clearly, to her, misrepresented himself and his intentions. But there's also something about like timing and fate again here about how Taylor deliberately ignored that paradox. She clocked the fact that it wasn't going to work before it started, but he convinced her. You and I go from one kiss to getting married, rushing, love bombing, gaslighting, still alive, killing time at the cemetery, never quite buried. And then also this part I thought was so interesting. In your suit and tie, in the nick of time, you low down boy. And in the same breath, you stand up guy. How he was like always shape-shifting and maybe not showing her like a consistent sense of self. You holy ghost, an angelic apparition in which you believe, tells you that it's the love of your life a million times. And then what? It's literally that the you low down boy, you stand up oh. guy. You holy ghost. It's crazy. You told me I was the love of your life. And you believed him. That's the part she's not saying that you hear, like, the regret. Because she's oh, angry. Oh, she does. And he she's said mad. it she's mad about at herself a million she's times. This. this song goes Ooh. fucking insane. It literally hurts like a knife in the gut. In your suit and tie... In the nick of time. And it wasn't. You notice that? If he showed up right on time, didn't he? Right at the right moment. When she was fresh When she was literally slammer. down in the dirt, ready for something else. And he said, ooh, I'm here. And I'm sure he knew that her issue with Joe was that he never promised her anything. So what did he do? It's pure evil. Promises. My thing is that I don't... I'm not even sure... If he was like actually lying, if he even knew that he was, I don't know. So it's I, like, I think he's a pretty, she says, I mean, later on, on the record, you loved drugs more than me. That's going to make any person act irrationally and different. And I also think Taylor has had extremely limited exposure to addiction. And it is such a complicated, horrible beast to contend with, really difficult to deal with as a loved one as well. So I feel as though that is kind of a shadow that looms over all of this. Um, especially because Maddie has been so open about like the fact that he is an addict in recovery. So to hear that he's like kind of maybe falling off the wagon is not great. Um, but there's a through line here, I think from, I can fix him as well. Who's going to tell me the truth when you blew in with the winds of fate and told me I reformed you when your paintings of heaven, she thought she could fix him turned out to be fakes. You took me to hell to a con man sells a fool, a get love quick scheme. I felt a hole like this, never before and ever since. Girl. You taught me a secret language that I can't speak <laughs> with anyone else. <laughs> 
I call him like I see him. I call him like well, I see him. Fine. That's why she's so angry every night at the Eras tour. And and this well, uh, this second part of the chorus that she gets into, this part is so crazy. You cinephile in black and white. All those <laughs> plot twists and dynamite. Mister, steal your girl, then make her cry. Jail. I want to see the pre- I want to see the bars coming yeah. down. Slam. We're all ready for Throw it. Throw away the key. Give it to me now. Mr. Steal Your Girl, Then Make Her Cry. That's like a career highlight, I'm telling you. Uh huh. <laughs> it's oh my career God. highlight. She's a genius. Shakespeare, reborn she's, again. She's also really illustrating here in the bridge how he misrepresented himself. You shit talked me under the table. Interesting, because Taylor is the shit talker. She's the wordsmith. She's highly emotionally intelligent. I think Taylor knows how to manipulate people very well. But here she was caught at caught out by someone who for the first time was better at doing that than she was talking marriage and children in two weeks girl run Run. get out of there it's obviously nonsense but no you know it's one thing i can fix him it's one thing to talk rings you start talking cradles um i'm sending in andrea i'm on the phone Mm -hmm. andrea we gotta read 5150 this is a wellness it's not time check. for a grandchild. Let's Babies? go. You don't, want this, you don't want this baby with that DNA. Trust me. With this is not Matthew? The baby Babies mm-hmm. and Jack? That's was, why they didn't like him. I know Jack that's why was there say, in the but corner. Daddy, I love him. And he was saying, clap, clap, clap. He was saying, I'm loving it. You guys are so good together. The it's so great. The devil on her shoulder. Jack, Well, you know what? You? Also, no one... I wonder, are, do people really feel empowered to tell Taylor how, she, how they really feel when she's in a relationship? Because she goes crazy. She literally loses her mind. Like, you try telling someone that's in the throes of a a, a Daddy, I Love Him episode that what she's doing is stupid. She doesn't care. She's not going to listen to you. So It's unsafe. It's unsafe. Why even try? It's unsafe for everybody in the room. My favorite line on this is, dancing phantoms on the terrace. Are they secondhand embarrassed that I can't get out of bed because something counterfeits dead? It was legendary. It was momentary. It was unnecessary and that's where the shame really comes in i think should have let it stay buried it was unnecessary it didn't have i I didn't have to go through this i did it to myself girl should have let it stay buried in my defense i have none for digging up the <laughs> Please, grave another I'm time begging you. i'm begging I'm you just Release saying me. what we're all thinking not I'm me certainly not i <laughs> And then, of course, there's the the outro of the song. What a valiant oh, roar. Him. What a bland goodbye. The coward claimed he was a lion. That is one of the meanest things she's ever said about anybody. He came in hot. <laughs> it was burning so hot. Oh, my God. I thought he was really. It, and what she says in the in the preface, he, the empress, um, empress, how gallant to save the empress from her gilded tower. What a valiant roar. And then in the end. You were just a fucking disappointment. You were just a fucking disappointment. I'm coming through the braids of lives, of lies. I'll never leave. Never mind. Wow. You see that? Pun- That'll get you. <laughs> <laughs> Watch fucking out. Punch. And your last. And your last. Um, the I'm sorry. The lyricism in this is just so beautiful, and it's it's very intentional. It's not too much. Our field I, of dreams engulfed in fire. Your arsons match your somber eyes, and I'll still see it until I die. Or the loss of my life and the strings at this part. Oh, girl, Aaron Desner, I will kiss you on the mouth with tongue. <laughs> and I all one of something that I really love about the song is that the focus really is on the writing. It the delivery mm-hmm. is so quiet and soft and so almost resigned. and the melody is very oh, plain. It's so gorgeous. Just all focus is on the writing and. Because Aaron knew. He said, oh, this is high career highlight. We got we to gotta highlight it. <laughs> we got to highlight it. We got to come back to that, as AJ these, would say. These people are so crazy. They're so fucking crazy. I'm loving it. They're sick. sick They're sick. Man. And then we get actually my favorite transition on the track list. Going from LOML to I Can Do It With A Broken Heart is troll behavior. And I was... <laughs> gagging oh i was, I was gagging. gagging this is a quintessential taylor swift song quintessential taylor swift song title jack at his very best production wise um madeline and i have discussed that this is bejeweled sister duh it Her is older better braver sister and i love his like um 
addendums in the background, like when he goes one, two, three, four, and you can hear him laughing. It sounds like it several sounds like, times. It sounds like she's under the stage waiting to rise up and start the Eras tour. Like I'm yeah, really picturing is... her in her Miss Americana gown, like on the lift, waiting to come up. Right. And she's feeling like she wants to die, but she's hearing she's being her inner monitor. She's being counted in, and then it's go time. There is also like a, uh, there's not a crowd in the background. I wouldn't say that, but there's a kind of loudness and it's very like surround sound that like almost, an arena. yeah, mm -hmm. it's very, very well done. I mean, the man's a genius. <laughs> the oh. man is a genius. Soundscaping. Brilliant. Yeah. We need to be He's scoring. Really... We need to be scoring movies. Oh, he does. Scoring He's... movies now. This to me is for sure a, comp a composite sketch because I think she performed brokenhearted for different reasons on the era's tour twice. Like she did it when Joe and her were over and she did it when her and Maddie were over. The contrast of her being in her glittering prime and saying, I can show you lies. Then they count her in. I can handle my shit. The part that really got me was lights, camera, bitch, smile. I was like, that is my Barbie. That's my cruel summer Barbie. I could see her. <laughs> And I just am it completely enamored with the fact that, like, she's saying things that she said on the record in much sadder ways. She's saying, he said he'd love me all his life, but that life was too short. Breaking down, I hit mm -hmm. the floor. All the pieces of me shattered as the crowd was chanting more. <sighs> and it's just, like, so, like, upbeat and, like, it's the energy of the show. I was hitting it's almost my like, marks. Right. It's, like, oh. internal mono. It's almost like she's just counting in her head, just get through it, just get through it, yep. just get through it. Mm -hmm. Going through the motions and the steps. Just like I can do all I have to do. But also there is, it's like my favorite part about it is that it's not effortful for her. That's what's really coming across as well as like, of course I can do it with a broken heart. Don't try and come for my job. She says at the end, she's like, literally like that's, that brings me back to the idea of did, were, were you just come here to, did you just come here to like ruin my sparkling summer? Like, were you trying to fuck me up in the middle of like one of the biggest moments of my entire career? Because you couldn't, no one could, I can do it with a broken heart. I'm so depressed. I can hold my breath. I act like it's my birthday every day. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so obsessed with him, but he avoids me like the plague. I that love that line about so Joe much. Or Maddie, because Joe didn't. It come could be to about anybody. Store. Let's not forget. Let's not forget. He didn't come. They were still together, and he didn't come. And because I'm miserable, and nobody even knows. Girl, we knew. Don't oh, don't say knew. that. We knew. Yeah. Happy I think people that... don't get up on stage and say this is the happiest I've ever been in play question. They just don't. They don't do they that. They just don't. They don't do that. She was signaling to us. She really was. It was a cry for help. And then she and really she has the balls. It. She has the fucking balls. I guess like your average era's goer is <laughs> like, mm -hmm. sure. Da, 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 da. But she knows that we no. know. I mean, come on. We know. Everybody on the live stream at home was like, girl. She's broken. Because she's just, you know, ah, this is such In the a middle good of the pouring life. rain as well. She's soaked. Yeah. It just adds another layer of derangement to it. <laughs> she's so fucking crazy. Oh, I cry a lot, but I am so productive. It's an art. It's an art. You know you're good when you can even do it with a broken heart. Now that's my Taylor Swift. Tell them. She's a fucking pro. She's a this... professional. I Some might say is... that uh, doing it with a broken heart is actually part of the job description. I think Perhaps. it is. Doing it in the pouring rain is part of the job description. Lightning's flashing. She's up there on the stage. And she's, I think she's... she gets a sense of power from doing it, too. That's what I get from this song. She's like, yeah, okay, I might have a broken heart, but I'm still going to rock the house down boots. That's what she does. And if she ever stopped doing it, it wouldn't be her. She'd really be down. Can you imagine a day? Uh, no. <laughs> no, I refuse. Heartbroken I refuse. so bad. Retired. No. Never. None. It's Never. her muse. When, when she gets to the point where she realizes that her broken heart is her muse and men are not her muse, then we'll be cooking the peanut oil. <laughs> then what happens? Then she's then she's literally like the lady that she describes in the albatross. <laughs> it's like literally going to be her life. <laughs> literally. Here to destroy you. Yep. Black well, Widow, maybe. Than you think. We love her so much. Congratulations, Diva. You're everything. Let's get into some more scary terrifyingness the smallest man who ever lived i mean we knew what this was going to be and it delivered this one pissed me off and i'll tell you why because the first time i listened to it i didn't get maddie and then somebody said that it's about maddie and i went on my walk and i this song came on and i the heard first her walk say, with a new album is a crazy moment it, it really puts things into place and i heard in your jehovah's witness suit who the fuck was that guy and i was like it was like that's so raven. I was like, I saw she that with my him. own two eyes. The I Jehovah's saw that. Witness suit really clocked him. It really <laughs> he was that such was such a cook. 
It's like he literally did look like Angel. I remember thinking that. With his fucking skinny like, black tie. Yep. Who is mm-hmm. that? He wants to tell me about our Lord and Savior. Who no, thank you. Who the fuck was that guy? That's what I really love about this song. Is like, this is the first time in a long time we've gotten a Taylor Swift song where it's like, I was there. <laughs> I saw that. I literally saw that. I was there. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Was any fuck? of it true? That oh, this we, song like gagged me to my core. The inhale at the start before oh she my God. gets going. That really took this me song out. to me also directly follows. I can do it with a broken heart. She gets off stage after doing bitch smile. She's convinced herself she's okay. She's in motion. She gets back to her hotel room. She puts her phone down. She takes off her makeup and then she lies alone in bed staring at the ceiling. Was it even? Was any of it true? <laughs> And that's so funny. (laughs) What's so fucking funny about this song? Again, me not knowing that this was about Maddie. You tried to buy some pills from a friend of friends of mine, and I was like, "Oh, Joe tried to buy pills." I I said in my reaction video, I was like, "Joe drug pro." I said, "Turkey drug pro pills." Joe tattoo. (laughs) Joe smoke cigarettes. Joe pill. (laughs) Joe bisexual. I had that (laughs) moment too. Joe bisexual <laughs> because of fucking um Chloe, Chloe and, and Marcus. Marcus. Joe mm-hmm. bisexual. See now, maybe if he was bisexual, we'd get a little bit more juice out of him. He, look, well, look what happened with Maddie. He's a member of the LGBT, <laughs> and we're clapping and we're. Cheering. I mean, this album. I mean, only the LGBT could deliver this. That's the truth. That's true. It's the truth. Don't say that, Madeline. They'll take your words out of context. <laughs> what? Do, wait, wait. What do you mean? What do you? How would they take that out of context? I need Only to the LGBT could deliver this album. Is there a certain oh, subset of people that think an LGBT oh, person the, might the, have delivered the Gaylers, this album? The Gaylers. <laughs> to them, I Let's say. Let's make it clear for them. The muse. Have a field day. Actually, have you know what? Day. Shut up. Be quiet. Nobody cares about you. <laughs> um, was any of it true? The most devastating thought to have after a breakup. When something doesn't work out because you're not compatible or there's infidelity, you have like a definite reason and you can like have some closure. But this feeling of being conned or lied to or tricked oh girl it makes you question your own ability to discern like good from bad it rocks your foundation of reality yeah this this song is definitely like a complete moment of like pure clarity like i see it all for what it is and i am Mm -hmm. so fucking pissed the anger that she displays in this song there's this line in the song. If, if there's any line in the song that makes me crazy, I must say what it is. You hung me on your wall, stabbed oh. me with your <gasps> push pins. That oh made me ready to march. I was like, wherever, whatever hole he's hiding in. We're getting him. Jail. In public showed me off. Then sank in stoned oblivion. Interesting parallels here. Joe cherished her only in private, at least when it was good, which she perceived as being more authentic. But what she wanted was a little bit more public flirtation and showing off. And when she had it, she realized that that itself can be duplicitous. He clearly led her to believe that she was everything. The, fi- the queen, his final boss of conquests. And instead, she's treated like a runner-up. And I think the reason why he's the smallest man here is because he didn't even actually have the courage to like end it with her after doing all of this, putting her through it. She's long past the point of pining here. There's no more pining. There's no more wanting him back. She's literally sitting in the wreckage of her mistake and being like, I let you blow through my entirely stable life even though she was unhappy with joe she wasn't despondent she was able to carry on this reminded her of her capacity to feel hurt again she was inoculated against joe's quiet treason this was something else i don't even want you back (laughs) (laughs) this has completely rocked my foundations i wouldn't do this again to myself if you paid me a Uh -uh. million dollars but i do want to know why (laughs) I tell you what I want to answer. Yeah, was rusting my sparkling summer the goal? This was the best summer of her life. Can you imagine? She was already on such an adrenaline high from the enormity of her success. Having someone be like, I love you. I want to marry you. On top of all that, after she'd felt so neglected. She's um, like, no wonder she was like, it all makes sense. (laughs) It all makes sense. This is finally everything starting to make sense. And then you wake up and it's over and you're going, was any of it true? 
Oh my not God. a word. Not a fucking word. And then she asks the most important question of all time. Were you sent by someone who wanted me oh dead? My... Did you sleep with a gun underneath our bed? Were you writing a book? <laughs> Were you a sleeper cell spy? To the, the levels? Do you know how betrayed you have to be to think like, it, was this a joke? So, oh my or God, someone I don't was get gathering into it. intel on I don't you get into to do it. espionage? I can't. It's Cause, so... Cause one, I mean, as Taylor, you could wonder, like, are you treating me just like a fling or a dalliance to be some inspiration, some fodder for your fucking material as a songwriter? Is that what all of this was? You just did this to see if you could do it? Uh, how was it? To see like, if you could have the pop star? It? Dating Taylor Swift, how was it? Since you're going to report it to anybody anyway. I would have died for your sins. Instead, I just died inside. Well, he's, he's going to find out what it's like to date Taylor Swift. This is the thing. They don't understand what it's like to date her until it's over. Then you know. Then you he's realize. sitting there. He's sitting there like, oh, I thought I was going to be killed. I mean. <laughs> I mean and you really thought, deserve prison. Prison. Present, she said. Gasped when she said that. It is hilarious to me that she is on Instagram being like, "Guys, don't worry. Like, we don't. I don't need you to avenge me. Everything's all good." And then she's going in her most angry voice. Jail, jail, you jail, deserve jail, jail, prison. Jail. And he does. You by the said way. normal girls were boring, but you were gone by morning. That supports my theory that he was doing it as a fact finding mission, just to see if he fucking could. Little rat. You said normal girls were boring. We need to have like a Taylor's correspondence. Taylor's me behavior really needs to be unpacked at some point because she does it from time to time. You kicked out the stage lights, but you're still performing. Was any of it true? <laughs> I'm like shook. Again. It's really, it's really gag worthy. Like every time I listen to it, I get very surprised. <laughs> I don't know why. It's like I, I keep like thinking she's not going to say I have, he deserves the prison. When was the last time? Can you remember that she was this mad? No, like, I can't was remember. she last this angry? No, never. Literally Reputation, never. I guess, but she didn't even have a specific single. There's nothing like Taylor being angry at a man she was in a relationship with. There's nothing like it. It's a drug like nothing else. All Too Well, Really or Better Man is like, Better Man even though isn't that mean. All no. Too Well is scathing. This I'm is telling scathing. you, this is the meanest thing I've ever read. <laughs> I'm telling you, <laughs> she's she wasn't even this mean about John Mayer. This is mm -mm. like, she was pissed. I think he really... John Mayer was, I should have known. That was the refrain. I should have yeah. known. This is, what, are, you, are you fucking for real? Did you, you completely... Were you sent... He were you sent here to kill me? Tell me. Sir, <laughs> tell me. Were you sent here to kill me? <laughs> like, that's so crazy. But I You'll get it. You'll slide into inboxes and slip through the bars. This idea of him being Teflon, which I think really is so, he's slippery. Like, Matty Healy is always putting his fucking foot in his mouth. And somehow, he seems to just kind of make it out fine. Like, it doesn't ever really seem to impact him. And she is noticing that and being like, you kicked out the stage lights. You've ruined my fucking summer, and you're still getting away with it. He's so not, fucking crazy. Not anymore. And not anymore. If you think about it, like in all the speak up now nonsense, it wasn't really about him. It was about her dating him. You notice mm -hmm. that he never he never truly is held to task. She was held to task for dating him. What what consequence did he have to face? None. He got more still, famous. Yeah. He got more yep. attention. Yep. He got to end it on his terms. And also, you know what? This is just going to give him a boost, too. Must be nice. At the end of the day. I mean, unless they start <laughs> cooking. Let's start cooking. <laughs> Let's start cooking. <laughs> Let's We're here. Start... We started it today. Day yep. one of day one. the rat behavior. You're over. You are over. You're done. No one likes you. I've been um, in love with wow. her for ages. And I can't seem to get it right. <laughs> you can't. You can't. You, and you and never, you never will. will. He's a tortured poet. <laughs> He and you know what? Is. You know what I think really will kill him in the end, though. Deep down, he knows in his heart of heart that he cannot write a song about Taylor better than anything she could write about him. What? And she wrote and so truth. many different kinds of songs about him as like insurance. She's like, let me cover every angle, every kind of way you could approach our relationship. Let me do it all so that you can't. 
I'm yep. telling you, I will be seated for the next 1975 record, though. Oh, I'm I'm seated too. <laughs> Why lie? I mean, we're gonna who knows to what he's gonna fucking say. It. He's well, gonna the be. The thing is, unfortunately, much as I hate to say it, Maddie Healy is a good songwriter. So, oh yeah, this is the first time that we have someone that could actually. It's gonna be so weird. I haven't even thought about this. It's gonna be so weird to hear her interpreted as someone else's muse by someone who's actually good. Unfortunately, I'm seated. <laughs> Unfortunately, I'm seated. I'm at the table. Seated. I'm waiting for my meal, et cetera, et cetera. Because um, there's after been... that, we can skin him alive. But yeah. until then, there has been nobody Paper that doll? she's dated. Nice no, try. It's... Nice try. Nice try. Nice try. Nobody Boo. has measured up. Boo. Boo. Um, the Alchemy. The Alchemy. One of the greatest songs ever well, made. Some people know that. It's a meat cute. It's a meat cute. That's what it is. A Jack number. It's not what I expected it to be. I thought it would be like moody. I guess it kind of is. It it, it mm. it's it's uplifting, but it's also like it 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 reminds me of almost Miss Americana. Is in like a very that's, strange that's what I way. Said. I wrote it's like Miss Americana and that it works entirely as an extended this metaphor. We're like this so, in the brain. Do, 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 do. Evolution <laughs> of snake. It's <laughs> I absolutely love this song. I just love the the writing in it and the delivery. This happens once every few lifetimes. Sing it. <laughs> Take it away. Sing. Sing. Take it away. What if I told you I'm back? Ooh. What the if? hospital was a drag. Again, you know, some people are interpreting that literally. Some people legit think Taylor went to a psychiatric hospital. Wait, there would we would know, you guys. You can't just go to. We the hospital. would know. It's the same thing like the secret marriage. We would know. I'm sorry. And it's also, wrong. Taylor has a limit to her to her ability to really melt down. At the end of the day, she when would she have had time to go to the psychiatric hospital? Uh, it was bit, cam, lights, camera, bitch, smile for for two days between Eras Tour shows. She went to the, to the psychiatric hospital. In a hospital? certain sense, the Eras Tour is the mental it's, hospital. It's it's literally the asylum. So, <laughs> so I don't know go. what you guys are doing. That's what therapy. You're talking about. Case closed. Case closed. Worst sleep I ever had. I circled you on a map. I haven't come around in so long, but I'm coming back so strong. This okay. You know what has been irritating me? A lot of the Tavis truthers are saying that this is about Tavis. Listen. Girls, it's not. It's really, listen. really not. Listen. And if you listen to it, if you read the lyrics, it's really not. The idea. Okay, the whole first verse is about a return and there being yep. a length of time. Travis and Taylor happened fast, and it happened like randomly right. there was no period of time where they were like separated for a long stretch and thinking about each other that just exactly didn't happen even so, in the second verse hey you what if i told you we're cool that child's play back mm, in school is forgiven under my role whatever happened that back down then too. they never met they met in july all over 2023 this record, <laughs> all over this yep, record she's exactly. talking about how before come back before guilty as sin there's definitely a, a tie between guilty as sin and the alchemy the alchemy yeah. is like the sequel to that song yeah um the sign on your heart said it's still reserved for me they simply weren't travis and taylor weren't even in contact long enough for that to no. be a thing no you know and also the the final nail in the coffin is the joke he jokes that it's heroin but this time with an e noted heroin addict joe <laughs> making that joke <laughs> Girls. Travis has never in his life done heroin. <laughs> I'm going to tell you that. I don't need to do a drug test on him to know that. I mean, mm -mm. he's an athlete. He's not doing that. There so, is, girls, we need to calm down because there is one song that is maybe about Travis on this entire endeavor, and it's called So High School, and it's not that good. So don't be tooting your horses about him being a muse that has entered the canon yet. In my opinion, he's still not on the page, really. I don't um, think he's on this that. this is about... He's not on it, right? I don't think that he I is. don't think so. He high is. school is the only one I can kind of see as being about him. But the alchemy girls, a lot of people are like, no. this is their gotcha. That they're like, this is about girls. Listen to the record. Listen to the story. They're all like really attached to like the um touchdown, warming the benches, winning, like all the stuff about like She's teams and sports. With high school football metaphors. Ooh. She's been doing it for years. She did it on Miss Americana. Well, also, she's like apparently a football genius, according to Patrick Mahomes. Did you see this quote with so, him saying that she wants a, that um, he oh, wants yes, her she was to coaching them. that she was coaching? She them. was giving them feedback. Patrick Mahomes said, "No, she's like a coach." And I was like, "Patrick, shut the fuck up! You don't have to kiss her ass so hard." Yeah, you don't. She need doesn't to know do that. anything. Come on. She All said, she knows Yay! is yeah. She said, "You should have um, run faster." So um, these like this metaphor that she's using, it means nothing other than she likes to use the metaphor. I mean, Endgame she's was written with high school. 
She's yeah, literally Endgame. obsessed with high school. We know this. It comes up over and over right. and over again. It is a frame of reference for her. And also, you know, the girls don't know a difference between a coincidence and an Easter egg at this point. Like sometimes there are things that sound like something you've heard before, but at this point her body of work is so large, she's going to use the same word a couple times. You know what somebody said in one of my replies? They were like, but I know that she told Travis that it's actually about him and he believed it. And I was like, sure. That's what I would sure. do if I was and her. And he would. <laughs> and he would. And he would. <laughs> and he would. I don't <laughs> mind if you pretend in your brain, like if you want to pretend that it's about Travis. But it's not. But Let's it's just like, be honest here. You, like sitting around arguing about it. I'm not really going to argue with anybody about who any of these songs are about because a lot of them no. are really up to interpretation. You can try. People yeah, who you are can, like, you can try and argue with me, but there really isn't right. anything about Travis on this record. So going to the mat down. over like this song is about Travis. Or, this song is about Maddie. It's like who can listen. Let me let me explain something to you. These blokes warm the benches. But we're on a winning streak, and that's all I know. I literally love this song so much. I don't give a fuck. I don't care. Maddie, Here, Joe. Oh, well, yeah, speak on it. Fucking Captain Ho. Crunch. Who cares? I literally cares? don't care. I love it. It's I an love adorable it. I love song. It. I, lo- I love yeah. the refrain, who are we to fight the alchemy? It's very cute. Meet cute. Shirts off, and your friends lift you up over their heads. Beer sticking to yeah, the floor. Yeah, that's the part where they're like, Trap! Trap. No, she's still working in the metaphor. You guys think that Maddie wouldn't take his shirt off? I think he loves to take his shirt off. Hasn't that been like you think that documented? He doesn't drink beer, girl. He likes yeah, to drink beer, take shirtless. his shirt off, eat meat. And also, his Maybe. what does it say? His teammates or his friends? He's in a band, girls. It just it says friends. It doesn't. If, if I think if it was about Travis, it would say teammates, but it says yeah. friends. It's not about Travis. I mean, we've debunked this. <laughs> the alchemy, the heroin Delicious. line. Travis would not say that. He wouldn't. No, he would. He jokes never. that it's heroin, but this time with an e. He's never. He doesn't know. Heroin before. He doesn't know how to spell either one. So <laughs> it, doesn't, it doesn't matter. People get really mad when we call him stupid. It's a joke. I'm not calling him stupid. Neither is Madeline. Relax. I don't think he's dumb, but I do think that he can't spell. And just because somebody can't spell doesn't mean he they're also, stupid. Also, we've seen his tweets. We know he can't spell. He can't. There's a. There's <laughs> different squirrel. kinds of people. Never understand. S-Q-U-I-R-L-E. There's different. U i r l e. Yeah. Squirrel. There's different kinds of intelligence, and he does not have verbal. That's fine. It's funny. He That's, can't spell. He's right. Yeah. I'm sure he knows that, and he laughs his ass off every time he makes a typo. He's very physically intelligent, <laughs> and you know who's not? Taylor Swift. It takes her 85 yeah. years to learn the bejeweled choreography, which is essentially this. <laughs> come on (laughs) shimmer (laughs) shimmer okay let's move on to the closer of this record clara bow i love this song weirdly i really do like it i think it's super interesting the more i listen to it the more it reveals to me i think the two women that she's chosen to liken herself to here are very interesting so i did a deep dive on clara bow when I heard that the Gaylers were freaking out about it because I wanted to like see if I could debunk it. So if you don't mind, Madeline, I'll just take a, a minute to tell oh. the story of why it's not a Gaylorism conspiracy theory. Basically, the reason why Gaylers think that Clara Bow is has some sort of dog whistle to them is because Clara Bow, they say that Clara Bow was a closet lesbian who was punished for that. When actually, in all actuality, what happened was Clara Bow is, she was at the first silent film star or like the biggest silent film star, the It Girl, if you will. And she was caught in this conspiracy by a tabloid press that got sued and shut down for defamation, one of the earliest defamation cases, sued and shut down for posting slanderous, false information about her. One of the rumors was that she was in a relationship with her manager, who was a female. But there was another rumor also that w- that she slept with an entire football team, which is why people thought maybe that was an analogy for Taylor. But those things were not true. And Clara Bow was extremely personally devastated by the fact that people thought that was true, so much so that she had to be institutionalized and basically never recovered from it. So if you're trying to say that Clara Bow was a lesbian, you're literally just playing into the evil, like, uh, shaming right. uh, rumors that were made up about her that put her in a mental hospital in the first place. So right. just had to end the Gaylers there for a second. Always, you know, just have to take what, what, whatever moment we have to end them has to be taken. Um <laughs> I think what she's connecting here with Clara Bow and with Stevie Nicks is both of these women had their personal lives 
be such an intense part of their stardom for different reasons. Stevie Nicks also kind of went through the ringer. You know, she was writing about her relationship mm. while she was in the fucking band. <laughs> she was watching it fall <laughs> apart in real time. It destroyed it destroyed Stevie Nicks in a way. She got really into drugs. It destroyed Clara Bow because she had to deal with all of these like fake lies that put her into an institution. Um, and then we have Taylor Swift. I'm seeing the parallels here. I'm seeing the parallels. I'm seeing the parallels. Mm -hmm. Let's see. What's my favorite line in the song? Hmm. <laughs> this song, I have to tell you the truth. This one has not clicked for me. It's not that I don't like it. It's that there's a lot of songs that I like a lot more. And those are the ones that I'm focusing mm -hmm. on. So this one has just kind of like not, I know like for a lot of people, like this is the song. I will say this is a fantastic closer. The last oh, yeah. line, the last line of this song, you look like Taylor Swift in this light. We're loving it. You've got edge. She Please. never did. The future Goosebumps is bright. All over my body when I heard that. Dazzling. I love the way she says dazzling at the end. So beautiful. It is a beautiful song and there's so much to be derived from it. I, it's just the one that like it comes on and I skip it and I skip Fortnite and I go back to the tortured poets department. <laughs> You're like, so I'm, I'm down bad crying at the gym. <laughs> Um, I understand. I would love to give my interpretation of this. Um, I love the way this is produced and the vocal delivery to start. The electric guitar, so nice. Welcomed by me on this record. Mm. She's basically talking here about ho Hollywood's like predilection to create multiple versions of one star. So back in the day, fun fact, the Hollywood studio system, also I think why she chose Clara Bow, they tried to create different versions of a star when a competing studio had like a really good one. And I think it's the same with record labels. So like when Clara Bow was big, MGM or whichever other studio didn't have her, was like actively trying to cast someone that could ride off of her fame basically replicate right. it a little bit but make it better um so clara bow was like the it girl in the silent films so what she says here in that following stanza is she's presenting that magical moment that every young like hopeful hollywood starlet yearns for the big braid i might die if it happens to me no one in my small town ever thought i would see the lights of manhattan and then she sets up the faustian bargain this town is fake but you're the real thing you're a breath of you're a breath of fresh air through smoke rings take the glory Give everything and promise to be dazzling. And that's the trade. For the glory, you must give everything. You must be dazzling. And at first glance, that seems like a simple trade, but actually it's not. Then we get into the more modern era with Stevie Nicks and we go into the suits in LA. The crown is stained, but you're the real queen. See, they're pitting women against each other. We hate to see that. Flesh and blood <laughs> against war machines. This is how Taylor, I think, entered into the music industry. You're the new god we're worshiping. Promise to be dazzling. This is about like her authenticity and her ability to like cut through the noise and rise above all the other female pop stars. I'm sure that's the way that label heads talk to her about her career. Then she shows how this trade falls apart as you age. You promise to be dazzling, but what happens when they won't let you shine anymore? Beauty is a beast that roars on all fours. Only when your girlish glow flickers, just so. Just then, do they let you know that it's hell on earth to be heavenly? Them's the breaks. They don't come gently. Then we get into that haunting line, you look like Taylor Swift in this light. We're loving it. You've got edge. She never did. The future's bright. Dazzling. And that's on period. <laughs> and that <laughs> is literally on period. It is definitely like for such a simple song and like how it's written and none of the layers. lines are it's layered like you have to really like dig into it. Beauty is a beast that roars down on all fours demanding more. Tell them. <laughs> Tell them. Hurts. <laughs> See, this is this is what the man wanted to be, you know. The man wanted to have this clarity. Ooh, that's actually a really good point. Yeah, this definitely I feel like this touches more on what it's like to be a famous female celebrity a lot more than the man did like this, this really as well yeah to to i think it's also really smart to use other famous from different eras too which i really appreciate we have clara bow in the 20s and 30s and then stevie nicks in the 70s 80s correct 70s, and then yeah. taylor in the now and then and who's who coming we after about her at the end a lot of people have immediately gone it's olivia rodrigo though and i mean it could be but that's not the point it's not the point. It's really not. The, the point isn't, it's, a speci it's not about being a specific person. It's about there will be somebody after me. That's and the, the point. trade that you make. Yeah. And I'm, and I'm the warning Faustian you. bargain. I kind the of prophecy. take it as like a warning to whoever's after her. Like it's, this is what it's going to be. And scene. 
well, I know how I know it, Halsey's Joe. turning it up. I know Halsey's like, this is the best album I've mm-hmm. ever heard. <laughs> I love this. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I'm kind of trying to think about like, since we're done with the standard edition, I'm thinking, how does this stack up in her discography? A lot of people were like, rank it, rank it. And I was like, I can't. Like, I need to live with it longer. Like ranking it's it among the areas. other albums? Or yeah. ranking the songs individually? Ranking it oh, among the I albums? I can't do either. I can't do well. Either. I did. Here, I did a little sum. I didn't rank them. Oh, whoa, whoa. <laughs> I didn't it. rank them. I put them into categories. So this is my top songs, and this is like every song on the record. Let me just read them: mm-hmm. The Alchemy, Down Bad, Who's Afraid of Little Old Me, Torture Poets, My My Boy Only Breaks His Favorite Toys, So Long London, Fresh Off the Slammer, But Daddy, I Love Him, <laughs> I Can Do It With a Broken that. Heart, <laughs> The Smallest Man Who Ever Lived, LOML, Guilty of Sin, and then I put in the middle. Madeline. <laughs> in the middle, you I should have just said the songs you don't like. That's more remarkable. <laughs> in the middle, I can fix him. No, really, I can. That song. Uh huh. Sure. It's not that I don't like it. It's middle. It's in the middle. And then I also mm-hmm. put Clara Bow there because she hasn't clicked for me yet. And then mm-hmm. I have my clunkers, Fortnite, and Florida, and that's it. I, I ranked it. <laughs> I ranked it. Wow. The best I can did. right now. Technically, I did. Let Let me think. Where? What would I do? I would put Fortnite in middle. I would put. You know, I would honestly put Torture Poets Department kind of in middle, too. Ha- that hasn't fully, fully clicked for me yet. My Boy Only Breaks His Favorite Toys, Diva, Down Bad, Diva, So Long London, Middle, But Daddy I Love Him, Diva, Fresh Out the Slammer, Diva, Florida, Bottom, Guilty of Sin, Diva, Who's Afraid of Little of Me, Diva. Honestly, for me, it's all Divas. I'm trying to think, like, if I had to pick one song that is really jumping out at me right now, I keep returning to I Hate It Here. But that's for a later discussion. From the standard version of the album, the song that really jumps out at me, I mean, I actually can't pick. This is the first time ever. I keep I keep thinking like for like an hour, Down Bad. Down Bad is my favorite song. Down Bad is my favorite song. Then for another hour. The one that comes to my mind. Mm -hmm. I told you I woke up this morning, down bad crying in the gym. gym, It's very, very like earwormy. Mm -hmm. It gets stuck in your head. It's really good. It should have been the single. We need a single. Uh, we've been begging for a broken heart. Oh, Gorgina. yes. Gorgina, queen. Um, I think I just know what I don't want. I don't really want Fortnite, and I don't really want Florida that much. Sorry, girls. Well, let me ask you a question. I think this is relevant. I think this is good for the end of the episode, too. Mm-hmm. Let's just say, theoretically, she opens the tour in Paris, and there's a Tortured Poet set. What songs do you want on it? From the main version oh, only. Cricket. cricket. How many songs do I have? I, I kind of did a short list, and unfortunately, it's too long, and I know they're not all going to be on there, but I made a list. <laughs> and it's too many <laughs> but i said how many songs is in each set like five to seven i would say yeah what could be as little as two if you're speak now i said down bad uh-huh. i said tortured poets i said i can do it with mm-hmm. broken heart we have i mean that has to be I, it, just I mean, has to be. it has to i also said the alchemy that's a dark horse and not everybody's gonna clap i'm clapping i said smallest man <laughs> who ever lived i did i said that should okay. be there who's afraid of little old me i said it i'm not scared to say it and then I said, but Daddy, I love a, him. You're not, a, you're not afraid to say it. Shortened okay. version. Shortened version, but Daddy, Shortened I love version. Right. I like all I of those. I'm going, to be, I'm going to be stricter with myself and give myself four songs. Oh, no. Down Bad. Okay. Easy. Yeah. That's got to be. My Boy Only Breaks His Favorite Toys is kind of begging for a performance. It really is. Oh. I Can Do It With a Broken Heart has to. That just has to be there. And then I'm kind of like... I'm between Who's Afraid of Little Old Me and But Daddy, I Love Him. And I think I'm going to go with But Daddy, I Love Him because it has a bit more of a like anthemic vibe to it. I mm. kind of feel like there needs to be a moment of desperation there, though. A torture poet moment, if you will. So I like LOML. Can we be doing that every night? I don't think she can. <laughs> Here's what I was thinking. I, th- this is like we're getting into I need these as surprise songs now. If I got any of these but, as a surprise song, I would kill over dead. But I don't dead. want I Can Do It With a Broken Heart as a surprise song. I no. need to hear the bleep loop. I but need you, my birthday. Do you know what I want as a surprise song? Who's Afraid of Little Old Me? I need that on the piano now. Oh, Stat. acoustically? Absolutely. We, you, we're going to get So Long London, you realize. We're going to get that. And I'm clapping. So Long I'm clapping. London. So, uh, if we got so. London Boy before, <laughs> that would be even more Gorgina. Yeah. Oh my gosh, mash it up, baby. You know I and love my so dog. long London. Ooh, the black dog. <laughs> the, the black, black dog, dog is the, really good. I've only listened to it we... once. But I, I did it I I thought it was interesting that it technically opens anthology. 
Yeah. It's weird. I don't know and, if she was thinking about it that it way. And then it goes but... into I'm going to get you back. The sequencing, I think, on the second part isn't as important. She just kind of was doing whatever the fuck. Yeah. It's interesting, though. Well, there you well, go. Well, that is Tortured Poetology Part 1. Return soon for Part 2. We're going to be working on it ASAP. Thank you to all of our new Patreon subscribers. We're so excited to have you on board. If you're not on the Patreon, girl, what are you doing? Madeline's full video reaction to Torture Post Department Part 1 and Part 2 will be is actually already on the Patreon, and my unedited reaction will be there too. Plus, you get to hear from us weekly, and I know you want to. So head on over to the Patreon and give us your money. Money, please. <laughs> money, please. God bless the Snake Nation.